This meeting of the Escambia County Board of Adjustment for June 16, 2021 is hereby called to order with six members present. We have a quorum. Will the clerk please swear in members of staff? Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Members of the board, copies of staff's resumes have previously been provided and remain on file for reference. The board has previously recognized staff as expert witnesses. Does anyone have any questions regarding their qualifications and abilities to offer expert testimony? Seeing none. The Board of Adjustment meeting package for June 16, 2021 with Development Services staff's findings of fact has previously been provided to the board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept the BO meeting package into evidence. Do motion. we have a motion? A motion. Motion by Willie. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Jennifer. Those in favor signify raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. Do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. And did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, sir. Reading of legal advertisement is not required. The chair will now entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal advertisement. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion I'll by second. Willie, second by Bill. I'm sorry, second by Michael. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Members of the board, have you reviewed the resume and transcript for the Board of Adjustment meeting held on April 21, 2021? Upon your review of the resume and transcript, are there any additions, deletions, or conditions? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion regarding the hearing resume for the Board of Adjustment meeting held on April 21, 2021. Do we have a motion? Motion. Motion by Marty. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Second by Michael. Those in favor signify raising your right hand passes unanimously. The Board of Adjustment hears administrative appeals, variances, and conditional use requests. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature. Quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however less former. All public testimony will be taken under oath, and anyone testifying before the BOA may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the BOA considers are entered into evidence and made part of the record. The giving of opinion testimony will be limited to experts and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence on record. After hearing the testimony and arguments for and against the proposed action and before making its decision, the BOA will consider the relevant testimony the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable law. Because decisions of the BOA relating to variances, conditional uses, and extensions of development order for site plan approval are final, unless overturned by a court of competent jurisdiction, the county may issue development orders and permits for the properties in accordance with the decisions of the BOA. However, if applicant requests and the applicant, not the county, shall bear any risk that such decision may be set aside or the development order or permit may be re revoked. Any applicant for relief from a decision of the BOA for said actions or any agreed party as defined by state law may seek review of such decision by find it, filing an appropriate pleading in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the BOA decision. The date of the BOA decision shall be the date the BOA voted at the conclusion of the hearing. 
Whenever the BOA denies an application, no new application for an identical action on the same parcel shall be accepted for consideration within a period of 180 days of the BOA decision. Any person aggrieved by a decision of the BOA relating to an appeal of an administrative decision may within 15 days thereafter apply to the circuit court for review. Each individual who wishes to address the board relating to a particular issue <coughs> must complete a blue request to, pe to speak form and submit it to the clerk of court. These forms are located on the table in the back of the commission chambers. You will not be allowed to speak until we receive one of these completed request to speak forms. We must have these completed for public record. <coughs> All written or oral communication aside from this hearing with members of the BOA regarding the matters under review today are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in the Board of County Commission Resolution 96-13. Before a decision, of this board on any administrative appeal, variance, or conditional use request. The chair will ask as each case is heard if any board member has been involved in any, in any ex parte communication regarding this respective issue to please identify themselves and describe the communication. Our first case is Conditional Use 2021-11900 Well Line Road. Board members, has there been any ex parte communication regarding this issue? Seeing none, does anyone have knowledge or information obtained from a, sort, uh, a site visit or other sources? Seeing none. Does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none, would the individuals who are party to this item please come to the podium, identify yourself, state your name and address for the record and be sworn in. M Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, because this is a uh, an unusual situation. I've been here for 15 years. We've never had one of these cases come to the board during that time period. Just to explain what it is, um, this is a provision that we have in the code that if there is a certified medical need for a specific time period, um, someone has the ability to place a mobile home or a park trailer on the same parcel as the home that a patient is in, um, who's got that certified time frame that they need care. And in spite of the zoning regulations, it allows that temporary placement of that accessory structure on that principal piece of property. Um, but it is strictly for that short time period. Just to get you where we are with this because the criteria are going to be a little bit different than you're used to. And once again, it's an accessory use. Um, as of today or as of yesterday, we still don't have confirmation that the, this is multiple parcels that they've all been combined into one. So we would need that before you could grant them an accessory it can't stand alone. It has to be one parcel, and we don't have that confirmation yet. Absolutely. So. And, 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 and Horace Jones, I don't know if I need to be swearing. Do I need to be, do I, I wasn't here. Do you solemnly swear, friend, that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be gone? Thank you. I do. I, I just want to be sworn in. Uh, I have a question. Does this require a notice of 500 feet or 1,000 feet or whatever? Yes, conditional use. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll proceed as usual. 
And uh, would you uh, state your name and address? Yes, my name is Patricia Griffith. I am the hus wife of Daniel Griffith, the one that is ill. I read your proposal or the same thing. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. If you both want to go ahead and do it at one time, uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Help you, God. Thank you. And were you you provided a copy of staff's findings of fact? I was, yesterday. And you understand that all the criteria must be met in order for the board to grant a, a variance, but you may address that. Uh, I'm not familiar with the understanding this verbal stuff. I just wanted to explain what's been going on for the past year and a half. We have been trying to get a home for my family of four, besides my husband that's ill. We tried for a property to be built on the property because we knew the zoning issue. That one, unfortunately, was denied through a process of a year between banks. With the COVID issue, we had to have certain things per the bank that fell through. So we came to this issue trying to get this changed. And then we, my, my husband is ill. And again, this is for four lives that we're talking about besides my husband. He's trying to do the best for his family. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I not understand the findings, but this is nowhere around. This is all his family property, his life. He wants to stay there until he goes home. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Bubba Griffith. Danny Griffith is my uncle. He served this country, taxpayer, wood producer in this area, 50 years, paid his taxes, never come down here. And if there's, you know, this is all family land. This ain't no neighbors. Well Line Road is not Milestone. And, and what I'm saying is when any time we can make somebody's life better and not hurt anybody, that's what we should do. And he's in bad shape. And I just humbly ask your deep consideration on this issue you know, he's in bad shape. And if we can upgrade his quality of life and not hurt anyone, that's what we all should be doing. And he's a veteran. So I'm just here on behalf of my uncle and asking humbly for y'all's deepest consideration on this issue. It's a life-changing issue for my uncle. Thank you, sir. We may need to get the staff's presentation, but before we do that, uh, I'll ask the board if they have any questions of the applicant at this point. Please reserve yourself for later. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, board. I'm Allison Lindsay, urban planner for development services. What the applicant just gave me was actually copies of the combination form that they give to the property appraiser and then a copy of the application. And then it looks like some where they paid their property tax but I don't see where it's actually been combined at this point or that they've had a payment for the combination. And I just wanted to, to clear that before I did the pictures and photography. You need to get back into evidence. It's, well, everything that I have is, and I guess I'll ask legal, but everything that she gave me was what is in the packet okay. with the, um, that pertain to the case, the warranty deed, the, comp, the uh, has, has it been it's in our it's in the pack no as far as I know from this information it has not been uh, combined or recorded and I don't know how long it takes the property appraiser to do that but I don't see unless did you did you pay for the did when you gave the app application to the property appraiser for this combination did you pay for it did they give you a timeline It would take a, yeah, Jones. It typically it take about a year taxes. before they get it recorded. Uh, that's that's how they. That's before it get combined. Before it get combined with the. That's their that's their procedures, but we got to make sure that if they submit it to them, that they should have had something stamped and signed and said stating that they received it, so that it can be properly recorded and. And when they get ready to open that back up to combine them, they'll be able to do it. But I don't know if they stamped it as being um, submitted. Mr. Know? Chairman, if we're talking about these documents, I really think we ought to think about 
uh, putting them into evidence before yes. we get too much farther down the road. I agree. Would you like that to be in the form of a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll move whatever documents the applicant presented, even if they are duplicative, uh, for the purposes of the evidentiary record, I think that we, uh, if they're going to be offered, then uh, we need to consider them. Right, and for, and, and, and I'm very familiar with these type of forms. Um, and we do have what it was submitted to them on 5-3-2021, received by CT. This is their, yeah. this is their indicator that they did receive, they did, this young did receive these forms. Mr. Chairman, I think we need to actually have them in evidence yes. before we okay, We have go a, much a motion to admit these items into evidence. Uh, do we have a second? A second, that. We have a second uh, by Willie. Uh, those in favor, any, any discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously that these items are admitted into evidence. Okay, now for the pictures and photography. Okay, so this is a location map showing the parcel on Well Line Road. And this is the 500 foot radius zoning map showing the property as LDR, low density residential. And this is the future land use, uh, suburban garden. This is the aerial photography showing the entire parcel um, outlined in red with the parcel to the f bottom left um, is where actually currently is I think where they want to have the mobile home currently is an RV. Here's the public notice sign posted on site. This is looking into that parcel I just mission mentioned uh, showing the RV on site. That's just another view of the parcel trying to get a better view. This is looking west along Well Line Road. This is looking south across Well Line Road from the subject property. And this is um, looking across Well Line also from the subject property, just straight across. And then this is looking east along Well Line Road. This is looking onto the separate property um, that has an existing home on it, which I think was the larger, or the piece in the middle. Uh, we can go back to that in a little bit, but I think this house is in the parcel that's in the middle of the larger piece. And that's all the maps and photography. You want me to go into the findings? Okay. So this is the conditional use for a temporary use of a mobile home for medical hardship. So as mentioned before, uh, in the Land Development Code, temporary placement of a mobile home or a park trailer may be requested when the landowner asserts that existing medical conditions require in-home care and an accessory dwelling um, is reasonable, reasonable to provide it. So the period of a valid approval, approval by this board of the medical hardship for the temporary use of the mobile home is good for one year for the date of approval. The period of use, the medical hardship temporary use of a mobile home is limited to two years and a six month extension may be granted by the planning and zoning official or longer by this board. However, regardless of any extensions granted, whenever medical hardship ends, the approval of the temporary placement and the use of the manufactured home is void. Uh, so criteria A, certified need. Um, the applicant provided a letter from the cardiologist stating that Mr. Griffith, his medical condition and his need for stable housing, but didn't document the extent of his in-home medical care or the length of time. The criteria B, minimum necessary. The applicant stated that due to the cost of lumber, they were not financially able to build a home and the adjoining parcel, which ha has the dwelling on it, belongs to a relative and they weren't not able to stay there and there was no mention of any care uh, provider. Uh, criteria C, adequate public services. The applicant stated that there is existing power and water services, however, they didn't provide a site plan showing the placement of the mobile home or any of the septic tanks. Uh, criteria D, compatibility. The temporary use uh, that it will not 
produce adverse impacts on the uses of the surrounding properties. And since the addition of the mobile home as an accessory dwelling for medical hardship is temporary, it should not create any adverse impacts. Criteria E, uh, the temporary use can comply with the applicable standards of Chapter 4. The Land Development Code states that a mobile home will be an accessory dwelling to the principal structure to provide in-home care, and it provides the following conditions, as I stated, about the period of use for the two years, or an extension can be uh, requested and uh, considered by uh, the officials. So staff findings recommend the denial of the conditional use for the temporary use of the mobile home for medical hardship due to the they did not meet criteria A or B, and that's the end of the staff's findings. Could, could you flash those two criteria, A and B? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I have a question uh, for the staff. Yes, sir. In looking at the evidence, the file last night, if I understand, you have to be a licensed physician and, and certifying writing the medical need. In reviewing the document that's on file, it's not that of a licensed physician. It is a uh, nurse practitioner, I believe. Am I right? Yes, sir. Is that acceptable? This code section, I don't know, I'll read it straight out here. <clears throat> Certified need. A Florida licensed physician certifies in writing the medical need, specifying the extent of need for in-home medical care and the approximate length of time for such in-home <coughs> medical care. What was submitted uh, does not specify the extent of need for in-home medical care nor does it give us an approximate length of time for such in-home medical care. I think the basic question is, though, is it certified by a licensed Florida physician? The code does say a Florida licensed physician. This is signed by an uh, advanced practice nurse practitioner. Mr. Chairman, I'd be concerned that we have an issue there because it's not certified by a Florida physician, nor is there the uh, uh, approximate timeline that this will be necessary. So, so, so basically, uh, if this conditional use were approved, it there is no notification that it creates any harm to anybody. So is, isn't this more of a uh, just gathering the document, the signature of a physician and, and uh, stating the length of uh, home medical? Are, are we being premature here and denying this is my question, I guess. Um, I would say, I would say that if the board, it's the board decision, if the board so wishes to, to well, see if they could get that, because I do not want to make any assumptions or presumption, you're right, uh, uh, Mr. Godwin, about the nurse practitioner and their criteria to sign. I don't, I don't know enough about their profession for me to say that they don't have the authority to sign or to license, because I know that's a different uh, 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 arena uh, when it comes to nurse practitioners and different things. So if the board so wish, if that is a concern, um, if they want to tape it until they can get that, really, really, and we can try to help work them to get that, that need to be done, that can be done. Because I don't want to assume that that's not a license, that she don't, or he or she don't have the right to speak in the behalf, I just don't know that area of expertise. Well, they can write prescriptions. And, uh, but I, I, I'm wondering if, if Mr. Jones, if uh, you're not suggesting that perhaps we delay this 
item to give the applicant an opportunity to get these two criteria addressed? If, if the board so wishes for that to happen, um, um, if, if, if they feel that they can get that done, mm -hmm. well, it won't be this many. It'll, yeah. be, the same, it'll, be, it'll You'll be give her enough time to get it done. That but won't be a problem. We have come to, you, have to come to, the, you have to come to the mic. specific it is he goes to the heart clinic she is his doctor with the cardiac consultant I will go to dr. Langhorn and get his, his letterhead or whatever we need to do that but that's his doctor mm -hmm. Langhorn mr. Chairman. Okay. mr. chairman if there aren't any other defect uh, deficiencies I mean the case could have merit uh, yes. if uh, if we can get the proper documentation it it appears to me the important thing ma'am you understand it is a temporary situation and it at max two and a half years so uh, of course I guess you can always cross that bridge if you should get the uh, authority uh, when you get there uh, Uh, is Chairman. there anything else structurally wrong that, aside from this uh, this issue, that you know that we can look at? I would remind the board: um, financial considerations are not a hardship that you can consider. Um, some other things to keep in mind: the wheels and axles must remain attached to the mobile home. Um, there's a form that will have to be provided through the county attorney's office for indemnification. Um, the mobile home will have to be removed within 60 days of the expiration of the uh, hardship and any extensions thereof. Um, at, if necessary, at the, the county will remove it at the applicant's expense. These are just extra things added in the code. It's not a permanent housing solution is strictly for a medical hardship for a set period of time uh, laying aside that portion is there any other issue that they would need to deal with uh, if they should consider to uh, continue their hearing I guess uh, is there anything else aside from that they would need to deal with so there's currently an RV on site, uh, apparently being used as a residence, which is not allowed in that zoning district, um, that would need to be removed. Okay, but aside from that, uh, what what I'm trying to get to, Mr. Chairman, is this: like I said, the case may have merit uh, if we can get the necessary uh, medical certification or, or and so long as the applicants understand it is a temporary situation it's not a permanent uh, fix for your you know your need but it would be could be for up to two years if I understand yes. Mr. Jones Yes, sir, and that is correct. And and, and again, and, and those and those uh, conditions that Mr. Homer stated, they are regulations that must be adhered to. And if they don't, it is on them. And whatever action is necessary for us to take, for the county to take, for what compliance on their part is, is on them strictly. Um, um, but as you stated, those those two conditions, it doesn't appear that it, it appears that those are the only thing that they have to really really be concerned with. The, the combining of the, of the parcel of the land, that has happened. They submitted those documents today. Again, how, when, and the length of time for Chris Jones to combine it, that's strictly on them. But they do, they did submit that. So, so it's, it's really up to the board. Again, the board wishes, because I just hate to, for, for something that is of necessity for them not to be able to, because it is, this is a, this is a unique, condition that's in the code 
that if someone can meet those conditions based upon the medical hardship, but this is a possible alternative to be granted by the Board of Adjustments if they can meet the criteria. Mr. Chairman, I would go ahead and move that. May I make one comment yes, uh, before you make your motion? I'm wondering if there is any problem with the, with the, the board uh, uh, granting this conditional use based on the satisfaction of cr criterion A and B to st staff satisfaction of A and B. That way they would not have to come back before this board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't know <laughs> about So, it, if I may, um, that's not the staff's call. Absolutely. Um, because if the letter comes back and it doesn't specify the why they need in-home care, why it needs to be in a certain time period, we couldn't move forward. Um, it's, it's not a staff call. Once again, it's Board of Adjustments call. And, and this is the thing, and Mr. Holman is actually right, and this is the thing. As you know, these things can be appealed. People can challenge different things, and we do want to be able to, if it is, if it goes to the next level of review, that it'll be able to stand on the merits of the land development code. So, so if the, again, if the board so wishes to do that, but the, the, the best alternative is to make sure that all the criteria it's met if the board so decides to, to do that so it can stand on its own merits and be in compliance with the stipulation as stated within the Land Abetment Code for this provision. I don't think we'll have a problem meeting what he's asking for. Now, my uncle has been in the hospital for the past two months. He just got out yesterday, spent a month in the ICU. Time is of the essence for this family, is, is what I'm saying. We have all intentions on meeting, and if we don't meet the stuff, it's dead in the water right there. You know what I mean? If we can, if we could speed this up to where they, you know, we're going to get you what you need, or we can't move forward anyway. That's not going to be a problem getting a doctor to say this man's condition. He just spent a month in the ICU, barely kicked out. So he I mean, does he don't have, have much time. I mean, you want specifically how long he has to have rehab? Three, four months? I don't quite understand what you have to put the letter. I don't know. He no. may have a year to live. I'm sorry. What stipulations do you want the doctor to say? So, the COBRA on the screen, could you pull that? So, criterion A, um, it's on the screen right there. It says, a Florida licensed physician certifies in writing the medical need specifying the extent of the need for in-home medical care and the approximate length of time for such in-home medical care. Just, just what it says right there on the screen. That won't be no problem. Okay. And that's all she's got to have? I mean, that's it? That's what we're talking about? That's the holdup? Again, I did that's not get we're, that we're until yesterday. I didn't get this go. findings till yesterday, sir. So. Yes, they were emailed. Willie, did you have something? Um, I agree uh, with that motion that was made. Mr. Uh, well, um, from my understanding, give them time to, uh, you know, meet each criteria and uh, come back, you know, and um, that way we can, you know, abide by the rules and, and um, it'll be smooth sailing from that day forward. I think we need to consider the urgency of this and I, I believe we're not having a meeting in July I we believe it's it not until meeting. August so right off the bat we've got um, a medical need here and uh, how 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 what type of situation is he in now I mean he's living in another home right now he's living in a camper he is living in a camper and, and you know with two of their grandchildren that they're raising They've got their hands full. It's a bad situation. You know, he served this country. It's all, that whole block you showed up there belongs to my family. You know what I mean? This ain't going to affect anybody but our family. You know what I mean? We're just asking to put it there. We know it can't stay there. 
And if we don't move it, y'all are going to move it at our expense or take our property. We're just asking. We can get the letter from the doctor. That's no problem. You know, we didn't know a, a PA or whatever it was was the one that signs it. When people go to the doctor, you look at even see a doctor anymore. You deal with all these phys physician assistants and all these other people. So we just thought that was all you were supposed to do. Getting y'all that paperwork, if that's all it is, it's no problem. We're going to get it. Okay. And uh, also, too, if there is a special meeting or a board, we could, we could ask y'all to convene. I, would, I, I don't want this staff to be, to be considered cantankerous against this if this is a valid, legitimate need that the board can grant. Um, I wouldn't be here if it was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would not. I, I would not want that to be in social media on the platform and all that stuff, especially not on my watch. Mr. So, Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, I would go ahead and uh, if the board could have a special call meeting to handle this, then uh, is and I presume that's possible. Is that right, Mr. Yes, if, Jones? If, yes, we could. We could. Get a special meeting set up with y'all if y'all can attend and get it to get it going next month. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, as if they can meet, still it's still contingent upon them meeting all the criteria. Just because it's special meeting, that still does not mean that it can be granted. It's still going to be y'all decision if it meets. Let's be clear. If it meets the criteria, then y'all have the then y'all can make y'all decision based upon that. Now the criteria you speak of is it's, a up there. Yes, right? yes, yeah, that's yes. no problem. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we. Uh, I don't guess. Well, I guess we're continuing the hearing, uh, and that we would have a special call meeting when the applicant has secured the necessary medical documentation, uh, and we would specially meet to consider this case. That would be my motion. Okay. We have a motion. Does everyone understand the motion? I oh. Mr. Chairman, I second that motion. We but, have um, a second by Willie. First of all, do we have anybody else speaking on this, or is it just those two? We do not have any speakers okay. on this. Is there anyone here who didn't fill out a blue card to speak? So, no, we don't. Okay, that's, that's great. My, my second still stands. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. You, you have some time to. And thank you. Thank you for y'all's time thank and you, your sir. consideration. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let me ask uh, Drew. Uh, We have a conditional use case and a variance case on the same parcel. Uh, would it be expeditious to present both at the same time, or would that cause any uh, consternation? So it's, it's one site under one ownership. It's two separate parcels. Right. Uh, the parcel to the south of Langley is a variance request for parking. The parcel to the north is a conditional use request so they are two separate so we better do them cases separate, separately. yes sir okay. um and as far as this isn't the same as a um, I got you. You, you know the waterfront accessory dwelling thing where it's chicken or the egg this is two separate things so all right thank you sir okay we're ad addressing next uh Case number conditional use 2021-10, 3000 block of Langley Avenue. Board members, has there been any ex parte communications regarding this case? Seeing none, does anyone have knowledge of information obtained from a site visit or other sources? Seeing none. Does any board member intend to refrain from voting due to a voting conflict of interest? Seeing none. Would the individuals who are party to this item please come to the podium, identify yourself, state your name and address for the record, and be sworn in by the <coughs> clerk. Good 
Good morning. My name is Patrick Yaley. I'm a civil engineer with McKim and Creed, address 1206 North Palafox Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32501. If you both want to raise your right hand, um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I'll be God? I do. Thank you. And you, you were both sworn in. Did you state your name and address? I think no, you have in the no, past. I have in the past, yes. Richard okay. Colbert, uh, 4295, okay. Lavalet Circle. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. And you were provided a, st a copy of staff's findings. Yes, sir. Good. You may proceed, sir. Thank you talk from my computer if that's okay with the board excuse me sure so the first request is for a conditional use um, I'll just kind of frame the context of the whole job and then try to get to the specifics of the conditional use so this is the former Pensacourt property on Langley Avenue it is uh, Drew stated there's actually two there's multiple parcels that make up the total project area, some of which is on the south side of Langley, some of which is on the north side of Langley. The general intent of the job is to construct a multifamily project, which is noted in the application and in staff's findings. The intent is to market that towards uh, short-term housing associated with the Sky Warrior program, which is a military flight training program. I'm going to try to stay away from operational aspects of that. I'll let the project owners speak to that. I'm going to try to strictly stick more to just what the uh, request is in front of us. So on the south side of the project, it's envisioned to hold the multifamily buildings and parking. On the north side of the project, on the north side of Langley, that's envisioned to encompass um, additional parking, a pool, and a clubhouse facility, which would include uh, you know, there's a small <coughs> training room in there. There's a small space for some cross, uh, CrossFit work by the residents. So it's just a facility intended to be used by the residents, um, not any kind of public pool facility or anything of that sort. So the property is split zoned and actually split jurisdictions. So we're within Escambia County. This is, I'm now speaking specifically to the north parcel. We are within both Escambia County and City of Pensacola limits. Escambia County zoning is MDR. In that zoning district, the basis of our request is for a conditional use for the proposed um, outdoor recreation entertainment facility and the associated parking. So that is the request that we're here for first, the conditional use. Um, I tried to be as specific as I could in my application to the board addressing each of those criteria. I'm happy to go through each of those now just in brief for the record and for evidentiary reasons. So um, the first criteria is general compatibility with the surrounding area. Um, acknowledge that this part of Langley is kind of a transitional zone between more of a residential area and more of a commercial area. We're kind of right there on the border in the sense that we are on Langley, um, which is a more heavily traveled corridor. It's not really a local road, um, and that that supports commercial businesses that are already in place immediately adjacent to this property. Uh, it's our opinion that the general compa compatibility with the surrounding areas does exist. As far as the facilities and services requirements, there are several subparts to this, the first of which is um, adequate roadways. Again, we are on Langley Avenue, which um, is supporting uh, high level of traffic right now. We acknowledge it's probably more traffic than the residents that live in the neighborhood would like to see through their neighborhood. Um, as far as this project goes, I really don't have any particular control over the existing conditions of Langley other than to offer that based on its classification, it is suitable to support this development at its location. Mass transit is the next subpart to facilities and services. Um, there is an ECAT bus stop located um, essentially right at the project area on the north side there of Langley Avenue. Um, public sidewalks exist along both north and south sides of Langley. This project would maintain those sidewalks. Any of them that were disturbed would have to be replaced or would be replaced whether they had to be or not. Uh, we certainly want to maintain that connectivity. Um, in our pre-application meeting with the county, 
Um, it was discussed actually subsequent to that meeting in coordination with the county's transportation engineer. Uh, we've coordinated some improvements to Langley Avenue, the crosswalk there to allow for the safe uh, passage of pedestrian traffic between the north and south parts of this site. There's an existing crosswalk, just a simple, you know, striped crosswalk on the roadway. What the county transportation engineer has requested and what we're prepared to provide is a raised pedestrian speed table. So not a speed bump, a speed table, and it's striped with a crosswalk and appropriate um, approach signing and marking to make it a safe pedestrian facility. She has also, she, Christine, the county uh, transportation engineer, has also requested that we replace what's now a striped uh, gore area on the north side of Langley with raised curb and gutter to narrow that, bring down speeds, make it more of a safe passage there. And again, we're prepared to address that as part of the overall project. The next um, facilities and services subpart is wastewater. Again, we've been in pre-application coordination with ECUA, who has confirmed that their um, system does have adequate capacity to dispose of the wastewater from this project. Solid waste, similarly, that falls in <coughs> ECUA's um, solid waste sanitation service area. Stormwater management is a big topic probably the biggest as far as the north parcel goes. Um, I can get into as much detail as this board would like for me to get into. I'll start generics and then I'll be happy to answer any questions um, or address any comments that might come up from the public. But to put it simply, stormwater solutions on this site are very challenging. You've got very poor soils, very high groundwater, very limited positive discharge. Um, all of which we acknowledge and have developed a solution that we feel addresses those, meets all the relevant code criteria, and is something that can be permitted through the county, through the city, and through the water management district, all of whom have jurisdiction over the stormwater. Again, I can get into the details of that system as much as you'd want to. Um, I'll just offer that we have met with the residents on a couple of occasions, actually a few occasions, various different formats, some kind of neighborhood meeting formats, some more one-on-one, -on -one, some just text and email communication. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, coordination with the residents on the stormwater, I've offered all that I can at this point in time to them. Again, if you all would like those details now or as subsequent follow-up, I'm happy to offer those. Safe to say, regardless of the solution, we recognize it has to meet all requirements of city, county, and water management district. We are not yet permitted through those agencies. We have not yet submitted to those agencies. That's something that in the normal course of business, after we get these more kind of due diligence, front end zoning issues resolved, then as we proceed through the full course of design and permitting, um, that's when those items would be submitted for permit approval. The last criteria under facilities and services is potable water, which again, in coordination with ECUA, they've confirmed that their system has the adequate capacity to support the water needs of this project. So the third criteria is on-site circulation, um, providing adequate ingress and egress. Again, I'll come back to Langley Avenue, which is classified as a major urban collector. Um, we do have an existing median opening there on Langley that would provide two-way ingress and egress to this property. Again, I've mentioned the maintenance of the public sidewalks. I've mentioned the improvements to the pedestrian access crossing. The next category or item is nuisance and hazards. Um, you know, frankly, my opinion on this is that this is one more of opinion than facts, so I'm here to offer my opinion. Obviously, with any new development, uh, we acknowledge that there is the potential for nuisances. Light, sound being the two that typically come up, uh, particularly when you're in a residential area, the neighbors are concerned with, you know, protection of their privacy, protection of their ability to enjoy their own properties um, in a quiet manner. So. What we can offer as far as the nuisances go, pool hours, um, something that the developers 
in coordination with the residents, and I think they've even offered this as a condition that they would be willing for the board to place on any approval that may be granted today would be um, strict operating hours for that pool, not a 24-hour facility, but open and closed hours, something that would, um, you know, at least offer assurances that there's not an intent to have <coughs> late night parties and, you know, all this kind of stuff that really gets to the basis of the nuisance concerns. As far as lighting goes, um, the developers are prepared to address lighting with low bollard style lighting. So these are the ones that, you know, essentially post comes up out of the ground and light is distributed at more of a shallower height as opposed to more conventional, you know, pole mounted lights that would certainly be a concern with distributing that light to the neighboring properties. So the low bollard style lights are what is being proposed to address that potential nuisance. And then, you know, there's various other things mentioned in the code, dust, smoke, odor, vibration, electrical interference. You know, I can offer specifics on that. Again, I think I would just kind of characterize it as a commercial use within a transitional commercial to residential area that, in my opinion, is uh, compatible and does not present any nuisance above and beyond what most commercial developments on that site would present. Solid waste um, on the north side of the site. So solid waste is envisioned just to be um, conventional, you know, roadside containers. We're not talking about a big commercial dumpster um, on the north side. Really it's um, limited to the waste produced by the use of the clubhouse. So again, more of a small commercial or residential, you know, 90 gallon dumpster roll-off dumpster containers, what's envisioned there. Screening and buffering, again, given the concerns with nuisance, we recognize that to be critical. It's something that is required by code. Uh, landscape buffers within county jurisdiction have to meet the county. Within city jurisdiction, they have to meet the city. Uh, we're prepared to provide those through a mixture of maintenance of the existing trees where possible, and certainly robust plannings um, within that buffer to provide visual noise and other buffering that's intended by that uh, by those landscape plannings. Signs and lighting. Um, there is no anticipation for any kind of attached or freestanding signage on the on the north part of this property, again, it's really not for public use. We're not trying to draw people's attention to it. It's there as an amenity to the residents of the multifamily development, so there's no anticipation of attached or freestanding signage in the northern project area. I did touch already on the Bollard-style lightings that would be intended to address lighting while not uh, causing light pollution onto the neighboring properties. Site characteristics is the next criteria, which per the code reads, uh, size, shape, and location appear adequate for the proposed use. Um, this is, you know, an unusual site in its, in its arrangement and its geometry, but we do have a plan that is demonstrated to meet all of the requirements related to those criteria, the setbacks, open space, stormwater management, access, all of those such criteria. Um, use requirements is one where sometimes there's additional use requirements placed on conditional use applications. Uh, this is not one in which those additional conditional use requirements are placed, so it's kind of just a noted criteria in my um, submittal package. And that, in summary, is the presentation that was given in our narrative. I'm happy to answer any questions now. I can come back later. I know there's lots of people here to speak on this, so proceed at the pleasure of the board. I would like to, uh, for the minutes to reflect and point out that procedurally, uh, we didn't recognize uh, the speaker as an expert, expert witness. This board has approved you prior. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, <laughs> just for the minutes. Uh, board have any questions of the applicant before staff uh, makes their presentation? I've, I've got some questions sure. uh, for clarification <clears throat> that we may need for later on. Uh, first, can you explain the um, the build out time frame? I know the south side has 
is some more of the apartment complex type thing. Um, is this a phased build out? Will this be built out all at the same time? Can you kind of explain that process? I'm going to allow the developer to speak to that so that I don't okay. misquote his intentions. Okay. Thank you. Um, Richard Cobra again. Uh, our time frame right now, our, our goal hopefully is to get permitting sometime by this fall. Um, we anticipate a probably 12 to 18 month construction period. Um, we would build one building at a time and move along and probably open one building to move to the next building and move to the next building. It's, okay. it's the way normal construction, the foundation guys do the first building, move to the second one, then the framers come in and so that basically it would be finished. I guess if you want to call that phase, but it's really just as construction would be completed. And will you be uh, doing a lot of uh, demolition type activity with any structures that are currently there? Yes, the uh, existing Pence Court building would be demolished. There's a small former 7-Eleven in the corner that was used as part of the Pence Court building. That would be demolished as well. Okay. Okay. And that would, that would happen early on, um, almost immediately upon commencement of construction. Right. Right. Okay. And I guess um, my next question, I guess, is, is for the engineer. I, I would like for you to go into a little more detail on stormwater, sure. uh, just so that we have kind of a background. Absolutely. Of, uh, I'm familiar with that area and um, <coughs> would just like to know more of the idea of what you've got. Sure. I'll be it. happy to. Um, so I mentioned kind of the, the three challenges I've got as the engineer. Uh, number one, I've got no real ability to percolate water into the ground. Number two, I've got very limited availability to release water from that property to a public right-of-way. Um, so, I'm gonna try to keep this concise, but I'm gonna have to ramble to some degree, so forgive me. The history of that property, as I've come to learn it, um, is one of nuisance flooding, I think would be one way to characterize it, right? Um, the site does have some stormwater features on it. I would characterize their effectiveness as low in their current status. Um, when it rains, from what I've observed, that property tends to just hold as much water as it can hold in kind of its flat meandering patterns before it discharges that water in an uncontrolled manner really in all directions. A little bit comes out to Langley, a lot of it goes to the surrounding properties. Um, my solution was envisioned originally to be an underground system, exclusively underground. When we engaged with the residents, when they offered some feedback on the history of that property, most notably the fact that there was formerly, I'll call them lakes, um, certainly water bodies I think is a fair characterization in the area, one more or less at the northern end of the north property, um, but others scattered in the area. As the engineer that was something I had to acknowledge, had to research and had to address. So for me to put a system a dry system underground in an area that has apparent contributions from an underground water feature was not feasible, so I had to change course. The solution that we've come up with and one that we presented to the neighborhood last night is a combination of wet ponds and underground storage. So there, there's two ponds. Um, Sure wish I could point at that screen, but I know you can't hear me. The two ponds are indicated in blue on that exhibit. Those are existing. The proposed wet ponds will be in those same general areas. The pond in the front, if you can envision the parking that is now kind of jutting into that existing pond, that parking has been lost due to the need to expand that pond. So the southern pond is now more of a uniform shape in that southeastern corner of the property. The northern pond, it is an expansion of what's there, but not to the degree 
of the southern pond. But what we're going to end up with is two permanently wet ponds. So these are ponds that essentially work with the groundwater to provide stormwater treatment as opposed to trying to fight against it. The wet ponds will provide my stormwater treatment. Overflow from those ponds will go into an underground pipe system, watertight pipe beneath the parking lot, which is where I'm getting my volume required to maintain the rate of discharge from the property. So I, you know, it's state law, local law, that I cannot release more stormwater after the fact than is being released today. So I've got to hold that volume on my site and slowly let it go after the storm is complete. So that volume that I need to provide that rate control is in the form of the underground pipe system. I mentioned the lack of positive discharge from this site. There is virtually no public infrastructure in the form of stormwater um, along Langley. There is a curb and gutter system which conveys water really east and west. Our property is more or less a high point. So some water goes east, some water goes west. In both directions, there is no in-ground pipe inlet system present. So in an ideal world, I could just tie a pipe from my site into a public system and it would drain down through gravity. I don't have that available to me, so we have to consider we are proposing the use of pumps to, relate, to remove stormwater from the underground pipe system. So it's, you know, it's, a, I don't want to use the word unusual, but it is a unique system. It's a unique solution to a unique problem. Combination of a wet pond to, pr to remove pollutants, underground pipe to provide rate control, and a pump to discharge water out to Langley. There's an emergency overflow out to Langley. Um, all of this intended to offer the residents and the permitting agencies, frankly, assurance that if and when the capacity of this system is exceeded, water will go out to Langley before it has the capability to go uh, to the surrounding properties as it does today. I know that's a lot to throw out there. Can I offer any clarifications on that? You, you've definitely done your homework on that one. Um, the, <clears throat> the parking area, is there anything unique about uh, the parking as far as being permeable or is it an asphalt regular parking space? Is at, it gravel? At this time, it's just considered to be conventional asphalt parking. Okay. Okay. Have you considered using uh, porous paving for the parking lot? It's something that can be considered. I don't know that I can stand here and say that it's been considered um, in any kind of I mean, of it, just as a how it hits you kind of thing. Sure. Would that help with the stormwater? The problem is that, um, I say the problem, a challenge to using permeable pavement, again, comes back to the fact that the underlying soils are not permeable in nature. So we could, if we were to consider that, uh, you could, I guess in theory, undercut the entire site, replace it with a more permeable material, and put permeable pavement on top of that, that's still going to require the use um, of a pump to discharge all of that water. It's something that can be considered. And uh, one last question. If I understand what you're saying, Langley doesn't have a central stormwater sewer uh, uh, infrastructure in it. Is that not in front of our site. There is the top end of a system, uh, roughly a block or two to the west. There is some uh, limited infrastructure back in the surrounding neighborhoods, which honestly the residents could probably describe in more detail than I could. Um, to the west, excuse me, to the east of our site on Langley, the first stormwater inlets and pipes are now associated with what the city just put in at the roundabout there in front of Hitzman Park. From what I've reviewed on those plans, even that system really doesn't have any downstream connection to a continuation of the system. It's simply 
bubbles up into Langley Avenue. So to put it very briefly, no, there is no very limited public stormwater infrastructure along Langley in proximity to this project. Yes, sir. A couple, couple of questions. Yes, sir. Um, are the ponds connected to the piping system or are they independent of the underground piping system? The ponds are connected. So they're connected to each other through an equalization pipe. So they maintain generally the same level. Um, the, oh, any overflow from the ponds is connected to the underground system. And then the pump pumps from the underground system off site. And the parking lot drainage, is that connected to the <coughs> ponds or is that directly connected to the piping system? No, sir. The, uh, uh, the parking lot drains to the ponds first so that all the pollutants are flushed into those wet ponds where they're then cleaned, you know, by the wet pond processes before everything discharges to the pipes, which then get pumped off site. Uh, is there an emergency generator for the pump system proposed? There is not in the plans as of yet. There is an auxiliary generator connection that will be provided at the control panel for the pumps, but as it's currently scoped, there is not a permanently installed on-demand generator. From what I heard you say earlier, um, in a heavy rainstorm, um, the system will flow into onto Langley? Yes, sir. If it, if it over, if it, um, supersedes the amount of water that can be held by the piping system? That's right. And even in normal operations, typical discharge will be to Langley. Um, it's the details of the exact point of where the force main, the being pumped out of those pipes, it could potentially bubble up into Langley. It could potentially, if we can get to some of this infrastructure that's a little bit off-site, my preference would be to have a direct connection to that to keep all this stormwater underground. These are things that I have to work through with the county drainage engineer as part of the design review. So I heard you say that um, in the case of a heavy rainstorm. Yes, sir. Um, as opposed to the current conditions where it flows into the neighborhood, mm -hmm. it would not flow into the neighborhood first. That it would is be correct. pumped out and or flow into Langley. Normal operations would be to be pumped out. When that is exceeded, there's an emergency overflow out to Langley. Those would occur, both occur before there was any chance of it overtopping my curb and gutter and flowing onto the neighboring properties or the tops of pond. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, sorry to, to drill you here. That's okay. A couple more questions. Sure. Um, do you have a similar stormwater issue on the south side? Yes, ma'am. So you will take care of the south side on the south side and the north side on the north side? That's correct. Okay. And is this, um, this is all on uh, septic? Or so For sanitary sewer? Yeah. Our project will be on gravity sewer, okay. not septic. Okay. Um, I think those were my only two questions. I have a question. Yes, sir. What happens when we have a Sally or an Ivan or just a tropical storm that hangs on for 24 hours, mm -hmm. it seems to me that this system is going to be uh, stressed, to put it mildly, in that kind of environment. And I just wonder, is, I mean, is this feasible? Uh, I mean, it seems like a fragile, uh, fragile solution, let's put it that way, if we have a real uh, uh, rainfall event or a hurricane? That's a fair question. Uh, my response would be that regardless of solution, I think that this area in general is going to continue to struggle with stormwater, particularly in those extreme events, no matter what happens with this property. I'm confident that the proposed solution that we have and that will be ultimately, well, potentially reviewed and approved by all the agencies will improve the conditions as it relates to this project site's contribution to the area. I am absolutely not trying to convince or convey 
that we are going to solve the area-wide drainage problems. Those are outside of the purview of this project. That's a public infrastructure need, in my opinion. So to try to answer your question, in a hurricane or tropical storm event, I would still very much expect this area to experience flooding. Um, my position is that the flooding as it is contributed to by the by our site is improved by the solution that we're proposing what about the facility itself won't it flood too are you making preparations to raise the freeboard or something so the grading of the site is such that we are above i don't want to say well above i would consider it well above but we are above all of the public streets and infrastructure into which we are discharging. So again, I guess I would have to say if the entire area is inundated to a degree that it floods, excuse me, um, there's nothing in particular on this site that I can do to protect our building any more so than the surrounding residents could do to protect their building unless we, you know, elevated the building to some kind of, uh, I'm not saying there is no, no way for me to guarantee that a building doesn't flood, but I guess what I'm saying is we've taken what we feel to be uh, reasonable design considerations to protect our building from flooding as we would do on any other commercial site. Is that a yes, thank reasonable you. answer? Yes, sir. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Um, I noticed you say you think it will improve mm -hmm. um, the conditions. Um, think is a hard word to like, you know, swallow. Um, um, do you know, I meant, or you don't know, you just think at this point? What I can tell you is that following all commonly accepted stormwater design practices and by placing my signature and seal on the final design, it's my professional opinion that that is the case. I cannot 100% guarantee anything. My role as an engineer is to design to the codes, design to the best practices, and to protect the public safety and interest. I'm standing here as a registered engineer telling you that I'm confident our job does those things. Is there an underground storage type of retention in this area currently? Um, not one that I'm associated with. Well, in this, I have done lots of underground stormwater Within the county? Solution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, there are. There's one, I'm, well, there's, to some degree at this facility, there's got some permeable pavement that ultimately ends up out in those ponds. But as, as far as underground storage, like you had mentioned, as far as collecting and then mm -hmm. pumping to remove, is there any in the in the area there are um, underground storage used to be something that was kind of um, on the fringe of solutions a lot of times because it was so expensive um, right. in the past several years maybe even decade as land has become less available right um, the land costs developers have seen those as overriding the additional construction costs of an underground system so i would say that underground systems while probably not the majority of solutions still are more or less common solutions okay so it's not an anomaly i mean this isn't something that we've invented in you know the recent decade to i mean this is been something that has been done and works and so yes ma'am i will qualify that as saying that the combination of wet ponds with underground stormwater storage with pumps is something that is i i have not done it in all three of those combinations i've done them in you know the certain pairs i've done a wet pond with a pump i've done underground with a pump but to combine them all in my professional experience, I haven't seen it, but the, the, uh, the practices as a whole are something that are implemented on a regular basis in our area. Now, as far as the, you had, you had talked about um, 
of not removing the fill um, or the the soils, um, obviously you're going to have to dig down, I guess, to a certain degree mm -hmm. to put these, I don't know if they're tanks or, or, or if they're just lines or, or what have you. Envision to just be pipes, but there are alternatives. Okay, so there, um, as far as things such as, I can, I'm just envisioning mm -hmm. Uh, maintenance of these pipes or if the ground gets so saturated the pipes you know start coming up and floating and those types of issues right I'm sure that's been <coughs> taken into consideration can you kind of explain the the maintenance of these so uh, maintenance of really any stormwater system is something that I have to again as the engineer I've got to sign and seal an operation and maintenance plan that becomes part of the permit package. Some agencies do it more formally than others. I did offer the residents last night that the water management district probably has the most stringent operation and maintenance requirement. They actually make you convert your permit for construction into a permit for operation and maintenance and they continue to bind you to the compliance aspects of that. For an underground system, typical maintenance includes, um, you know, flushing the lines of any accumulated debris and sediment. Now, uh, you know, one positive of the solution that we've got is most of the debris and sediment will initially be flushed into the wet ponds. They're almost going to act as sediment basins. Um, suspended solids will settle out of the water, leaves, floatables, all of that stuff will be trapped in those ponds. Those will just be maintained. The ponds will just require typical pond maintenance of a wet pond. The underground system, even so, will still certainly be subjected over time to sediment and other uh, solids that have to be removed. Uh, they can be jet sweep, they can be vacuumed, I mean there's various methods, but the pipes will be provided with access, on-grade access, so that a vac truck, uh, rotor rooter, you know, think, think along those lines, those mechanisms can be used to maintain the pipes. And is this maintenance something that the development will maintain, the development will maintain, or is this um, given over to the county once? This will maintain, un, uh, be maintained under private ownership. So okay. the the owner, the original permittee, assumes operation and maintenance responsibility at the time of construction. If there's ever a change of ownership or change of maintenance entity, there's a legal requirement to notice the agencies of that change okay. because, you know, the agencies have to know who to come after if it's not right. maintained, right? right? Did I hear you say that you're elevating the entire property? I am having to add fill to get water to flow to my ponds. The property as it stands right now, I'm going to call it flat. They're, they're, is some meandering patterns, but virtually it's flat. So I've got to add fill to get water where I want it to go, which is my two ponds. So there's an ex there's a the northern part of the property was previously filled with a lot of fill material. So there's already um, perimeter slopes down to the neighboring residents. Um, I'm not trying to suggest that we're raising that um, dramatically higher, but I certainly have to bring in fill to help slope this property, excuse me again, to get the water where I need it to go. How do you keep that water from flowing back onto the neighboring property then? The water at the fill slopes? Right. Um, that's something that in practice, as long as I'm, the short answer is that water continues to do what it's doing today. Water that hits the slope will continue to drain to the neighboring properties. What I'm correcting is all of the water that falls in the middle of the project won't drain out to the neighboring properties. So you're, not berm, you're not using berms to do that. You're using slope? I think I would answer. I'm using curb and gutter primarily okay. to keep water on my site. Okay. Behind that curb and gutter, I will have tie slopes that tie back to existing grades around the perimeter of the property. Great, thanks. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, how deep are these ponds the that pond. you project? Sure. Right? Um, so the top of the pond elevation is at 124. The bottom of the pond is at 116, so that's 8 feet. Again, these are wet ponds, so the permanent water elevation 
will be at an elevation of 121. So when you go out there and look at them, you'll see three feet of a dry pond with water in it. Right. And the design, in order to provide the volume that I need for all the you know, microorganisms to chew up the pollution, I've got to give them a volume that will all be below the water level at an additional uh, five feet. I guess the other question I have is sort of related. If the water table is high there, yes, sir. Uh, are you successfully going to be able to deepen the ponds to actually work, percolate or whatever? It requires a dewatering operation to allow the excavation of those ponds. So that's uh, construction means and methods. Dewatering is pretty common in our area. Right. Well, I guess what I'm getting at, do you think that would be successful over the long term, given like your testimony about the high water table? Seems like the high water table would be an enemy of your percolation in your ponds. It absolutely would be, which is why we cannot do dry ponds, which would percolate. These ponds yeah. are intended to be permanently wet, so I'm actually utilizing that permanent water level as part of the design. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not trying to um, lower the water table on a permanent condition. I'm actually allowing it to work with the design of the system. And can I ask you one more please? Uh, water question, yes, not sir. believe it, not related to drainage. <clears throat> is the projected swimming pool, how big is it going to be, and is it going to be an outside uncovered uh, pool? The answer to your second question is yes, sir. Um, do we know the dimensions of that pool? What we talked about, we haven't signed a contract with anybody. We've talked about a 30 by 50 um, kind of lap pool. And, Mr. Chairman, if I could move to the pool, if no one else has questions, I've just got one or two related questions. Sure. Uh, I guess that would be better for you as the developer, I suppose. Uh, if I understand the testimony, the pool would only be open at designated hours. Yes, sir. Right. Correct. And uh, I guess this is sort of like a private BOQ kind of setting, I suppose. Is that accurate? No, sir. It's, it's, it's an apartment project. I mean, it's, it's got our goal, our, our target tenant, I guess, if you will, is Navy flight students that one of the partners trains. Um, but it's, it's going to look and operate pretty much like an, an well, apartment project. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is, for example, will alcohol be permitted around the pool? We're not going to sell alcohol. Um, if people wanted to watch a football game on Saturday in the clubhouse, I don't know that we would say you couldn't bring a beer to it. I, I, I don't want to say that. What I will tell you is if we get our target tenant, and, you know, this is a business we're trying to we, – we think it's a good idea. We think we will make it attractive so these people want to stay there. These are military – young military officer trainees um, and – our partners in the, that side of the business have basically said they're on their best behavior. I mean, because they're trying to get into the Navy, Coast Guard, or Marine flight program. If there's any problem at the pool, one call to their commanding officer solves the problem and probably gets them kicked out of the program. So it's, we don't anticipate that. I can't tell you what the future holds. Um, that is our business model, and that's what we hope to have there, and that's the kind of tenant we're looking for and who we're going to market it to and model it to so that it's attractive to them to stay there. Well, it, actually, I think it's a good program. The Air Force has found that, the Navy has found that it works, saves on the front end a whole lot of <coughs> flight hours that are, aren't uh, able to uh, be successfully used by some people. So it's better to know before that you're not going to be a pilot or don't have the inclination for it. But laying that aside, you do understand where my questions are going about nuisance. Yes, sir. And, I, I mean, and uh, because if I understand the looking at the file last night, you got homes that back up to your, I guess you're going to have a back fence. 
there, right? Yes, but not to the not to the pool area or anything like that. We have, and I have something to present to you. Um, we have had, at, if you remember the April 20, 21st meeting, we had a number of neighbors show up here um, who we had not talked to before, who had concerns both about the things you're talking about, noise, nuisance, lighting, but also about stormwater issues. And the reason we're here today is because we committed at that time to postpone it to this hearing to give us time to meet with them. Um, we have met on multiple occasions now in group settings and individual settings and actually have a, <clears throat> at the suggestion of staff, I prepared a schedule of when, who, we, who we've met with, when we've met with them that I wanted to introduce. Um, and I can present that um, for evidence and also a schedule of what we've agreed to do. Basically, we made representations to them and they're like, okay, we'll use this kind of lighting, we'll do these kind of plants. And their question, well, how do we know you'll do that? And I said, well, put it in the, if, if we get your approval today, that will make that a condition of the approval. I have no problem with that, and I've prepared a schedule of that to present the, the, the board and the staff to add to the approval that it's conditioned upon our doing those things. Yeah. So if I can present yes, this sir. to you. But in doing that, the reason I say all that is you'll see on the site plan here, we have, at their request, moved the pool to the far west end of the property so that it butts nobody's backyard or front yard. It actually abuts the vacated right away to the north, a commercial um, dentist office to the west, and our parking lot to the east. Um, and we've reconfigured the building so that open areas would be towards Langley and shielded by the building, shielding noise and anything. Any open picnic area will be on the Langley side and shield any kind of noise going to the neighbors in the back. So you have moved the pool yes, all on the basis of conversations Absolutely. from? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that that's a would seem to be a good step. If I can present that to you to – how do I do that? Just, 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 just ask them. They need to – they want to submit some things. Evidence. Yeah. they got to take Board it. members, uh, could we seek a motion to admit this uh, information into, into our files? Mr. Chairman, I'll move that. Uh, we accept the uh, developer, the applicant's uh, additional documentation for the file. I'll second. We have a motion by Michael, a second by Jennifer. Any discussion? Those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Passes unanimously. Any other questions or? Have you also modified your lighting program then so that you're using this bollards yes, approach? Sir. Uh, will you have any kind of floodlights at all? No. The, 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 there are pictures attached to the package here that show what a bollard light is. It's basically a post right. um, yeah, about like four that. foot high with lights on it. <clears throat> there are county requirements for illumination of a parking lot that we'll have to comply with, and we've got a um, lighting expert designing that right now, but we have instructed him to do that. Um, any lights by the pool, again, will be shielded by the buildings. To the, the goal is to not reflect anything in anybody's backyard. Um, excuse me. Um, we're also going to fence the exterior of the property. Um, to the extent we're permitted to do eight-foot fence, we will do that. Um, I'm told in the city it may be a limit of six-foot. We'll just have to see whatever the code will allow. We'll do that. And we're going to provide then about a shrubbery border um, and I've given the pictures here of the kind of shrubbery we would propose using, which is, I've seen in a lot of places, I've used it in other developments, it's very thick, it grows high, it's called a tea ivy plant. They grow fast, basically you can't kill them, and it would prevent headlights from going into somebody's backyard, which was the goal. So we'll have the fence, then the plants. Um, and, you know, those are things we'll, we're committing to if, if approval is granted today that we'll make it a condition of our approval. I guess my last question then uh, is uh, what has been your feedback from the neighbors and uh, what has been the tenor of your meetings and that sort of thing? Uh, they've been interesting. Uh, the, uh, there are neighbors, um, I believe, that appreciate what we've done and what we're trying to do, particularly on the stormwater level. I do believe, I'm not an expert, don't claim to be. But our instruction to, instructions to Pat were, Patrick were to first make sure we don't make anything worse than the current situation. And the, and the property right now, drainage off of it is a problem. It's, as it sits right now, there's water draining into all the backyards on the east side. Um, and 
ponding up through a drainage ditch to the uh, Shipley's property on the, the west side. We believe that, <clears throat> based on what I've read and understand, it looks like his plan will improve both of those situations, and we've made commitments to do that in, uh, in there that we said we would build it according to his plan. Now, his plan is, of course, subject to approval by the county, the city, and the water management district. He has limited control over that <clears throat> other than that is our intention. The general neighborhood, majority of the objections that we're getting or we heard last night, and we had a three and a half hour meeting with them last night, it was the last meeting, has more to do with traffic and just <clears throat> congestion on Langley Avenue and putting more people on Langley Avenue. Um, and that's always going to be a complaint. <coughs> the, 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 the objection is we recognize the need for housing, but do it somewhere else. Well, you're always going to get the do it somewhere else comment. And we were suggested maybe you could do this down on um, Summit Boulevard. Well, you'd have the same issues there um, that you have here. Our property is zoned HDMU. It's high density mixed use. It was intended for the use we're proposing. It is adjacent to city R1 zoning. I recognize that. It's sort of a transition zone, as Patrick was saying. But this was you know, if the county wanted it to be zoned R1, it would have been zoned R1 from the beginning. It's just a commercial piece of property, and we are using it as zoned. We're not asking to increase it. And the extra parking we've been asked, we're asking for in our variance request today um, is really something we feel is above and beyond something we have to do. It's really so that we have plenty of parking for our tenants. I don't believe, as a developer, most codes do not require sufficient parking if you just do the minimum or even the maximum in this case that's allowed, you end up with a under park development, which I've always something I try to avoid and I don't like it when I see it. I think you should over park if anything so that you don't have people parking up and down the street and being a nuisance to the neighbors. So our parking request today is really for that purpose so that we're trying to be a good neighbor and not be a, a parking nuisance in the neighborhood. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I know we must have a number of uh, citizens who wish to speak, so. We do. Would you like the staff to do any presentation at this time at all? Mr. Chairman, uh, it would uh, hurt to uh, just, we've pretty much gone through the criteria, but it would be good to hear from the staff and see if they concur with uh, the engineer of record and his uh, Findings. Okay. This is John Fisher, senior planner. So um, our findings are based off of the last um, meeting. Um, we were never giving updated plans. As he said, stormwater ponds have been enlarged. Um, some of the parking has been reduced on the north side. Um, we were not received those plans in a significant time to uh, move forward um, with changing our uh, case findings. So again, these case findings still relatively still mean the exact same uh, um, position on what is presented today from both ends. Um, conditional use case 2021-10, um, the applicant is requesting a conditional use to allow construction of a pool, clubhouse, and parking in the MDR zoning. Um, under criteria A, and findings and facts, this is a 1.63 acre parcel that fronts Langley Avenue and is under both Excambia County and the City of Pensacola jurisdictions. The southern 1.03 acre portion is the county and the northern 0.6 plus or minus acres in the city. The properties to the north and the west are under county jurisdiction and are zoned MDR and HDMU, high density mixed use. These zoning districts allow for high, higher densities, and in this case of HDMU, some retail that would not be allowed in parcels to the east, which are within the city limits. The city's zoning for those parcels is R-1AAA, a low density single family district. While the proposed use can be compatible with the county's zoning, special attention must be given to the buffering of the adjacent residential properties. A special project condition will be added to the development order stating that the developer must obtain all applicable permits from the city of Pensacola for, before any construction. Under criteria B, 
um, for public facilities and service services. Um, the necessary water, electric, and sewer facilities are available to the location. All facilities and services will be reviewed during the site plan review process. Under criteria C, on-site circulation, a site plan was submitted to the Development Review Committee that shows a driveway connection to Langley centered on the parcel. The access is currently being reviewed, particularly regarding vehicle and pedestrian safety, efficient traffic flow and control, and on-site parking and crossing of Langley Avenue to the proposed apartment complex. Under criteria D with nuisance and hazards, given the nature of swimming pool and the clubhouse noise could be an issue to the regular through operating hours, the avoidance of nuisance and hazards to the adjacent properties and properties in the immediate area will be evaluated during the site review plan process. Under criteria E, solid waste the solid waste service is available for the subject property and waste container will be screened for the ldc screen and buffering um, under the design manual landscape areas um, they will be reviewed during the site review process a required minimum six foot privacy fence will be required between the parcels and adjacent residential uses along with landscaping up to an eight foot fence privacy could be um, available as well <coughs> signs and lighting um, we do have a lighting ordinance uh, there have to be directed lighting um, again that will be reviewed through the site plan review process um, at the time of plans review we did not receive any lighting um, but we will um, that will be part of the requirement before a development order would be issued under criteria H um, size characteristics uh, based on the applicant's submittal plan review Per pre-application, the size, shape, and location of the parcel will accommodate the proposed use on the county portion of the parcel. The stormwater pond within the city limits may face design challenges due to the hydraulic soils and the possible presence of a Grady Pond type hydraulic feature. Under criteria I, use requirements, based on the applicant's middle applicants and site requirements, the proposed use could meet the zoning district requirements. The applicant would need to continue through the development review committee to receive a development order for all sites and that includes an apartment complex on the south side of Langley Avenue. Staff findings. While there are concerns regarding the split jurisdiction review, it appears that the proposal pool, clubhouse, and parking can meet the required conditions for Eskimo County portions of this parcel. Staff recommends approval of as it was submitted. That includes staff's findings. Thank you, sir. Uh, board members, before we call on speakers, any questions of the uh, staff at this time? Seeing and, none. And I will say this. Um, um, as John stated, and, and, and Drew is going to elaborate further, I just want to state for the record that we did not have those, those various meetings that we did not have that information. But if the board decides to approve either one of these cases, those statements as indicated by the applicant saying that that such as they will not they shall they will those gonna be part of the site plan review process and they must be adhered to it's not no switching or changing because they are not in this record but they are made publicly and they are on the record and staff will make sure that any of those things that they stated that they will do that they shall do it Thank you. Speakers uh, will be limited to three minutes. If you don't need that much time, that's fine also. Up to three minutes, it will be timed. Please uh, keep your comments as factual uh, as possible. Uh, first speaker is uh, come forward and uh, state your name and be sworn. Uh, Kimberly Jones. M Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, just something I've noticed. Looking at the um, schedule of neighborhood neighbor meetings that you have that was accepted into evidence, just so you know, um, on item four regarding meeting with the prices, um, that should say uh, adjacent neighbors to the east. And on number five, when it gets to Shipley, that should say neighbors to the west. Sorry, just little details. 
Mr. Chairman, I think we can accept those changes as part of the permanent record. Okay. I don't think we need a motion for that, if that's okay. And uh, your comments are appreciated. Thank you. Kimberly Jones? Mm -hmm. Will you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth help you, God? I do. Thank you. You can state your name and address, please. Okay. My name and is for Kim the record, state your name and address. Okay. My name is Kimberly Jones, and I live at 5765 Reynosa Drive in Pensacola, Florida, 32504. I've been um, a resident of Scenic Heights since 1987. I've raised my children there. Uh, we used to have a YMCA there. We used to have a pool. The kids could enjoy that. I used them for daycare. Um, recently, we've had that taken away from us. Uh, now it's going to be a soccer field that they've already put in place, um, which is we have trouble with that, which is not here today to talk about. But um, it's a concern for our community. Um, that's the reason I moved there. Um, there is some residential or commercial area up above there mixed in with homes that people have had to deal with. Um, so I think I'm feeling, I'm speaking on behalf of the Scenic Heights community. Um, we moved there because of our kids. We wanted to stay there. We've retired there. And we want to stay there. We love our community. Um, I guess that's the main thing I have. Um, the main thing is traffic. We have had major, major problems with Langley. We've had people killed on Langley, on bikes, people crossing the street. They have tried everything possible to put things along that road. So kids, there is a Scenic Heights school right down the street from this place. Um, the kids ride their bikes through there. A lot of, you know, pedestrian stuff. Um, there's just a lot of concerns that we have about this because um, I think there's some concerns as to the Navy thing about it and there will be people talking about that. But the main thing is I am a resident and I see our community, I've seen it for 35 years and it's basically, it's, it's going downhill and we want to keep it that way. We want to keep a nice community for our kids. And that's basically all I have to say Thank about you, it. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Okay. Any questions, board members, of Ms. Jones? Thank you very much. Thank you. Jimmy Hayes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jimmy Hayes. I live at 5975 Reynosa Drive, 32504. Do you solemnly swear from that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. Um, beside the, the traffic concerns that the neighbors have, um, <clears throat> there's already a stormwater, and that's what that's kind of what I want to address here. There's already a stormwater problem there and then in that area anyway. Uh, the neighbors around can attest to that. My concern. Um, I have a mother-in-law who lives on the corner of Buford and Langley, which is uh, east on Langley, toward, Lang toward Scenic Highway. And every time that we get a heavy rain or a storm, water comes out of the neighborhood behind this piece of property, comes down to Hilltop, and there's not, there's not a storm drain at the top of Hilltop there that that water can go into, so it goes right down into Buford, all the way down Buford, puddles and, and floods the cul-de-sac and then comes down to the storm drain, which is at, at the corner of Buford and Langley. And, it's, and it gets sometimes as high as four feet or, or more. And there's, the city's aware of this. Um, they've even built a, a retaining wall for my mother-in-law around that, around that corner there to keep the water out of the driveway. So, so she, you know, if it floods, she can't even get out of her driveway. So there's been a, an ongoing problem with that. That needs to be addressed in addition to this. I feel like that, yes, this is all sounds real good, but I think we're kind of getting the cart before the horse. I think that um, the variance for parking is going to create more storm water. And if they discharge it on Langley, which they're talking about doing, which I'm, I'm concerned, which way is that water going to go on Langley? Is it going to go east or west? If it goes east, 
we've we've created even more of a problem. And we've got uh, the soccer field that has already got problems uh, that they didn't foresee, and they they don't even have it open yet. So there's already water standing in, that, in certain parts of that in those ponds. So that's my biggest concern. I feel like there needs to be more um, overall looking at what what this water is going to go and where it's going to do and what impact this property is going to have, this development is going to have on, on stormwater, not to mention the traffic issue. Um, there's also uh, the thing with the, um, uh, the developer and the students, okay? The um, question is how long is those students going to be there? What's the turnover rate going to be? Are they going to be there a month? It sounds to me more like a hotel than it does an apartment complex or a, you know, or like a bed and breakfast. So the cost that they're talking about renting for, all of that looks at, and, and, you know, if that doesn't go through, if that program doesn't go through, and there'll be people to talk about that later, then where are they, where are they going to get the revenue from? Who are they going to bring in there? Is it going to be multifamily? That's all I have. Thank you. Any, any questions of Mr. Hayes, board members? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Steve Delgallo. Good morning. My name is Steve Delgallo. I reside at 1132 Soundview Trail in Gulf Breeze, Florida. And I'm here in the capacity of a, um, I believe, an expert to deal with the matter in the form of a consultant. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I do. Thank you. Uh, they hired me in the capacity as a consultant for the project, and the experience I have, I believe, uh, warrants my capacity in that as an expert. I spent the last 25 years developing single family and multifamily residential communities in Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. I served as an Escambia County Commissioner for four years and five years as a city council person in Pensacola. And I served on the planning board of Escambia County for several years. And during the course of all that, it's very difficult because as a commissioner, you have 100 people in the room. You are lucky if half leave happy and half leave mad. Very seldom do you satisfy everybody's concerns in one meeting and that you have to limit the input to the matters at hand. And I really appreciate the professionalism in this board. I've seen it in the last several years grow tremendously from what it was when I was a commissioner. It was a lot of good old boys taking, good old, taking care of good old boys and it's not really that way anymore and I appreciate that change. But I, I feel like the variance, which I guess is what we're talking about, I mean the uh, um, conditional use is what we're talking about right now and having had the experience in sitting in the same chairs y'all are sitting in and as a commissioner and council person it's based on facts and you really reiterated that in your opening comments you know we're dealing with facts you'll probably hear a lot of hearsay today you're gonna hear a lot of things that um, may not be factual and it's important that there be evidence to those comments um, to be factual in your consideration, and I know y'all have been able to ferret that out in the past. But um, as I understood from staff's comments and from the professional engineer, under conditional use, you have certain conditions that are in your ordinances and in your um, uh, development codes. And if you meet those conditions, the staff recommends the, to the board to grant that use. A lot of what I've heard today and in the previous meetings, and I've attended most of the uh, community meetings with the individuals uh, that live in the surrounding areas, the biggest bulk is the traffic. There's a lot of traffic on Langley, and it's, it's grown considerably over the years. I used to live on a dirt road in East Hill that's now paved and is pretty much a, a, a collector now and not a little residential cozy street. Things do change, but the question is, is the uh, traffic generated by this project going to put a demand on this road to either uh, diminish the level of service or in any way impact it negatively? And I believe I heard that it was not going to. The other is stormwater, and I shared yesterday with the council person for this district. The stormwater issues are public works projects. As 
this, can I have two more seconds? The public works projects um, are both county and city problems. We, if we proceed with this project, are going to have to run piping quite a bit of distance. It's been suggested a thousand feet in one direction or the other to tie into infrastructure that's there. To solve that problem of flooding in this entire area by utilizing this property in a permitted use is not going to happen. Can we help by uh, lessening the impact by this project on that system? Yes, I think that's been demonstrated. Right now it is almost 100% pervious, impervious property with the tennis courts, the buildings, the parking lot, the aggregate that was used for parking on the site you're considering today for many years. It was used as a parking lot for the uh, club that was across the street. By removing all that impervious, by putting the underdrain system in, we're going to collect all that water and deal with it and discharge it according to the requirements of the three agencies that are overlooking that. So to, to summarize, just, you know, if, if there is an adverse effect on the general public by the conditions that have been presented and responded to, there needs to be factual base, basis for those considerations and also on the uh, considerations rendered by your staff saying that we can meet these conditions given the time to prepare all the documents that will be required. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delgado. Any, any questions of uh, Mr. Delgado? Why do you get so much time? Seeing none. Um, Jennifer Braille. Hey, can y'all keep your comments to yourself unless you're called up to the mic, please? May I allow my neighbors to go in front of me since we've got some that have to leave because of children? I mean, I don't mind being at the end. Is that allowable? I, I didn't hear you. Mr. Chairman, she... May I allow my neighbors to go in front of me because there are some that have time restraints that they have to leave, so can you put me at the bottom of the pile? Is that allowable? Oh, who is it? I'm Jennifer Greer. Oh, okay. Could I go last? Yeah. Thank you. Holly Full Phrase? Sure. Sorry if I butchered that. Okay. I put no because I just opposed all the way, but I got some things to say that are facts. So my name's Holly Fulford, 386410 Monona Drive. I solemnly swear whatever I need to say. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I so help me God will. So, Aaron and Opal, no problem flooding. 2014, we lost Scenic Highway. We don't maintain our systems. We've done better. I've seen great things in Scenic Heights. We've widened those drains. Looks great. We had a problem with Ivan. We had a problem with Sally. Why is that? Because we keep saying, you know, we're going to kick the can down the road. It's okay, we'll give us a little bit of, you know, more pavement, whatever. I like what you said about the percolation in the ponds. I think that's great problem solving. But you don't need to add more pavement. You don't need to add transient housing near a school. Because that's essentially what it's going to turn into. And that's all i got to say about that. Thank you very much. Linda Williams. My name's Linda Williams. I live at 6150 Alicia Drive. That is directly behind the property on the south side. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help of God? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, my number one objection to this project is it being billed as military housing when the representative last night from the school readily admitted that there is no military housing contracts nothing that is in agreement with anybody in the military about housing said students. So this is being falsely billed as a military project, which it is not. And the other concern I have that I'm very concerned about was I was assured because the ST engineering plant that was built at the end of my street that we had nothing to be concerned about in our neighborhood and my pool has been ruined. My, the vibrations that you're talking about this project will cause 
the vibrations from all the way down at the other end of the street completely cracked my entire pool deck. And now, directly in front of my house now, or behind my house, which is not even, I'm within 10 feet of, what do you think those vibrations are gonna to do to my property and our entire neighborhood who surrounds this area? So I'm very concerned about that damage. I'm also concerned about the considerable flooding that already exists where I live coming off of the Pensacourt property. I have an eight inch riser on my air conditioner, which is not currently high enough for the current flooding that has existed right now before any construction is taking place. The traffic is a nightmare. It can take 10 to 15 minutes to get out of the neighborhood. When you pull out of the neighborhood to try to go in the other direction on Langley, the space for a car is not even long enough to hold a car. So both your front end and your back end of the car is subject to being hit from either direction. So adding an additional 250 houses that is basically going to be dorm living um, is going to greatly increase the traffic. So who knows, it may take a half an hour to be able to get out of your own neighborhood, which I find ridiculous. The other thing is, this is a bait and switch. We were told there would be 76 units, only to find out that 54 of the units are going to have four bedrooms and that the other units will have two bedrooms. That was not how this was presented to the public. It was 76 units, not 250 units. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. And, oh, no, let me finish. And last night, the discussion, the people that were there, there were no happy people. There was no one there who wanted this development. Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, did I understand your testimony that you were told by someone representing in this project that uh, they have not secured a Navy contract for this pre-flight instruction? Yes. We were told that last night by uh, Warrior Landing, whoever the school is. Warrior, right, warrior something. Sky Warrior. Sky Warrior, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's a gentleman here who works for the military, and the military has no knowledge of this program. So how is that possible when this is a big military project? Mr. Chairman, could we, out of order here from the developer, this is a whole different uh, setting now. Is this true? This project arose, um, there's a company called Sky Warrior Flight Training. They have a, what's called a knife contract with the Navy. Right. They train, do the initial training for Navy pilots. They do have that contract and they train them. The origin of this apartment project is they have trouble with finding housing for their students is what they are hearing from their students. Right. So they got together with us as the property owner, or the property owner and, and we basically put together an idea of developing something. It was never said that the, this is not a Navy contract for housing. It's not a Navy development. There's no direct affiliation with the Navy. It's designed, we have to make this, from a marketing standpoint, attractive to those Navy trainees that they're going to want to live there. It's, the idea is to make it easy in and out. Um, right now, they have to come in. They have to, from wherever they live at the time, they have to find an apartment, find a roommate, find furniture, get utilities turned on, all those things. The so idea, you don't have uh, any kind of contractual agreement with Sky Warrior or, the, of course, the Navy to populate your development? No, Sky Warrior is a partner in the project, so they're going to market it to their students, but they don't have a requirement. Well, is, uh, and is it true it's going to be 200 and whatever the witness said a minute ago. Well, it's, it ends up, the project will have 248 bedrooms. How many people will have there is anybody's guess, but basically the, it's, it's more or less student housing. There'll be two or four students in an apartment. Are there enough students to populate your 
uh, housing. They have told me that there's more than enough. Now, this is just, again, the Sky Warrior partner here says they bring in 1,300 students a year. Um, so they, they believe there won't, we won't have enough housing for them at this point. But there's no guarantee, and we've never said there's a guarantee that that's what's going to happen. That is our plan. We're banking on it. We're spending a lot of money um, anticipating that. That's our business model. But in business and in life, there are no guarantees. Um, if we don't make it attractive to the students, they'll live somewhere else. But we think by having a fully furnished, easy in, easy out place they can go live for however long they're here, whether it's 30 days or a year, we think the average is going to be about a year. Some of them are here for two years. We think they'll be with us for about a year. It could be nine months to 15 months, but that's sort of going to be the average. Um, they're going to have a furnished unit. They don't have to, all utilities provided. They don't right. have to sign a long-term lease. It's easy and easy. Yeah. Out. yeah. Well, I guess my question is, if you don't have enough military personnel, is this going to then become like a regular apartment yes. sort of situation? I, I believe that's what would happen, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have a question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so now this really changes the game because um, when we were speaking of security early, earlier and um, anything being of a nuisance, um, you know, I was under the understanding that this place was just going to be full of flight students, you know, military students, and um, there was no worries about that. Um, the security cameras and in, um, in the agreement and um, the adjacent homeowners to be given a 24-hour number to call for security and noise issues. Um, if you start bringing in, rec you know, just outsiders from wherever, you know, and you start bringing in, you know, the alcohol, which you say they're allowed to bring into the pool, you know, if they if they want, um, that that kind of changes the game, you know, because I was under the influence that, you know, it's just going to be, you know, flight students that didn't want to get in trouble, you know, uh, that weren't going to cause a problem. So is there any going to be any kind of security other than the cameras and the uh, um, the phone number for the people to call? Well, we'll have a we're going to have a full time staff person, uh, an office worker, and a maintenance person. Like any apartment project, we're going to have whatever security level we need to have. If we think there's a problem, we'll have more security. Um, we have to keep it safe for our tenants, and for, not just for the neighbors, but for our tenants. We need to provide a safe environment. Um, it is still our hope and anticipation that it will be strictly military flight students, but we're not here guaranteeing anybody that's what's going to happen. We can't. We don't have a, a contract with the Navy saying they're coming here. We think that's what will happen. We're planning it that way, and we believe that's what's going to happen. Uh, one other question. Yes, sir. It's one thing if you are a uh, naval officer or, or a Marine Corps or Coast Guard or whatever, there's a great deal of discipline that's available if you create uh, a nuisance of yourself. I mean, you can get severely disciplined. It's another game if it's a college student, a civilian, or somebody that just works. I mean, how are you going to be able to enforce your rules with civilians? Oh, like any other apartment project, I mean, if we'll have provisions in the lease, you know, preventing that kind of activity and the ability to terminate a lease. It's no different from any other apartment project anywhere in the county or the city from that standpoint. I just wanted to comment. Uh, in reading the documentation, I did not, I guess, think of it as a mandated military housing development. I read it more of, you know, they were um, <coughs> in connection with it um, as far as, you know, if needed, it's there for them just as it would be for college students or, you know, kids that are, are getting out uh, of the, you know, parent's nest, if you will, for the first time, that sort of thing, uh, which I think frankly, we need in the area. Um, are there any other apartment type complexes um, along Langley or in the surrounding areas um, that you're aware of? There are some smaller, older complexes further to the 
west, I believe. Um, and there's some duplex townhouse kind of developments there as well. Okay. Um, and surrounding the Pensacola property all in the rear is a townhouse development. Uh, well, it's duplex townhouses right. called the Gantt that's been there for a long time. Okay. Um, but I'm not aware of anything new that's been built in a while. And that's, that's again, right. they came to us saying we have a need right. for housing. And that's Right, as they, as they typically do. And I think we've, uh, this board actually has um, reviewed a similar type of project, if you will, closer to UWF, um, being multiple bedrooms uh, connected to one central uh, living area, kitchen area type of, of uh, structure, um, which I think is, is actually something that many cities are looking into college-based cities um, that are looking into that type of arrangement. So, um, but I, I did not gather that it was a private development specifically for military. Staff. Yeah, the staff just wants to just one clarity thing. Um, the multi-family apartment complex is by right um, permitted. So, what they're asking today is for an expanded parking lot and a clubhouse. All right, so this is they, they can still move forward with this project as as they wish without the extent of extra parking um, as well. And just for clarity, anytime you have a central kitchen or shared bathrooms, that's more of a dormitory. So if this was the case in this, that would actually have to be a conditional use as a separate issue. Dormitories are not allowed um as a permanent right but this is saying this has got to be a multi-use family apartment type of complex so it is a permanent outright well is this uh well what is this then uh if you have four students and they all share a central kitchen is that a dorm setting so just for clarity exactly yeah. a, we, dorm, a dormitory is a residential building but not a dwelling used as a group living quarters typically with shared kitchen and bathroom facilities for a student body or religious order in accessory to a college university boarding school cover or similar institutional uses if they're using these as a dwelling unit where people will be, you know, living there, um, this would not be considered a dormitory. They, usually you have one central bathroom in a dormitory where everyone goes to that one bathroom, you know, all, you know, whatever, each floor. If so, each unit has its own bathroom, that is not a dormitory. So in theory, what we're really discussing here is a... Uh, well, as you say, then, as a dwelling unit, this is like it's an, an apartment, apartment complex. facility, this right? This is an apartment. Is it a permitted use? So they don't, they don't have to continue with this process. This, they're just asking for expanded parking and a clubhouse. That's what this conditional use is for. It's not about the apartment complex. This is about them adding additional parking spaces and a clubhouse. That's all this conditional use is about. And let me, and let me, and let me, and let me add to this. Thank you, John, for that. Um, pull up the map because I want to try to help frame the context so that we could understand. Pull up the map. The, the zoning map. Okay. Drew, if you can, the HDM, the HDMU portion, I like visuals, the high density mixed use portion, whether apartments, as John's clearly stated, is a use by right. It is allowed in that zoning category. So, in other words, and at least we, I like to be clear, in other words, so that everyone can know, in other words, they do not have to have any type of approving from any type of special board for that, those apartments to go in the HDMU. The only thing they have to go through is, is, is meet all the conditions through the site plan review process. Okay? 
Now, so, so that's, that's why I want to be clear. We understand that. So HDMU, by right, it will not need no planning board approval or, BA, or BOA approval at all. The reason why they are here, because they are proposing, they are requesting a conditional use in the yellow portion, the MDR, medium density residential, on that portion of the property. So, so that's the site that's in question, the MDR portion on the, for that extra parking spaces and that clubhouse, the swimming pool, on that side of the street in an MDR zoning. So I want to frame the context so we can really, really be clear on what the decision is. Again, high density mixed use allows apartments, multifamily dwellings by right. It does not need any type of special approvals by the Board of Adjustments or by the Planning Board. We're here for the property that's located in the MDR zoning category. So that's why I want to be clear with that. Well, Ms. Jones, if I understand what you're saying, then what we're considering is parking, holding ponds, a pool, and a clubhouse. In the MDR portion, yes. And what happens across the street happens across the street uh, as far as uh, what type of dwelling facility they put up, right? Yes, sir. As long as it's classified as apartment. If they bring any other type of things that's a dormitory, that's another process. But if they submit it to us as an apartment, that is a use by right. I want to be clear with that. Not trying to negate or minimize any, level, any of the concerns by the neighbors. But we want to be clear with what is, what your task is, per se, with the zoning category. That's my job, to make sure that people understand as it relates to the zoning and the uses that are allowed as permitted or conditional use approval and within the zoning category. So those are the items that I listed, essentially. That's what we're looking at, right? Yes. Yes. I believe that's the, that's what we have. And essentially, those are items that could fit in any apartment development right if if they if they can meet the, the the criteria for all of the parking calculations in the specified zoning district if it's allowed if they can meet it well i'm just saying this generally yes that's typically, what you would find in an apartment setting yes typically and, yes sir okay mr guess we're Ready to hear? We, we have a couple more speakers. All right. Mr. Would it be a burden on the board if we took five minutes? Five minutes? Recess. No longer. No longer. <laughs> be a five minute <laughs> recess.
Is it one or four bedrooms? Four bedrooms, one bathroom. Two bathrooms. Yeah. You said last night it was one bathroom. Kitchen, washer, and dryer. They're, they're the dormitory would basically be each floor has one bathroom for everybody, which would be like multiple stalls. A normal apartment, a one bedroom apartment, has their own full bathroom. A four bedroom apartment has their own sharing bathroom. You don't have a joint kitchen. What this is, this is on the phone. It was no problem. You have to develop it. You need to be clear. What you're telling us because we don't want to be misrepresenting you. Um, right. The whole thing's been misrepresented. No, all of us. Everything you said is correct. That's up to you. No, I'm, I'm talking about to get to this board. Right. This board has to be clear right. on what we have conditions and use approval for. Right. And I don't know if it's, if it's dormitory, it may be no, not a whole separate. No, it's not dormitory. Thank you, sir. What apartment gets rented bedroom by bedroom? What apartment gets rented bedroom by bedroom? What apartment gets rented individual bedroom? I thought it was going to be rented. I don't know. This is, this is what was printed to us, that, that it's being rented bedroom by bedroom. That is not how an apartment is rented. Again, as I said, that's not the case. What the case is about a pool and an extra parking lot on the north side. That's all this is about. That's what it's about. But the, the place can't be built if they don't get the parking. It can. It can. It can. It can. It can. It can. But they they're just trying to help out their land who doesn't get parking. You're not helping anything. You're flooding our neighborhood. That's something that the board have to decide. You're not helping. You're not helping. Anything at all. That's something that the board will have to consider based on hopefully hopefully based upon the facts. We understand y'all to give your testimony. I'm with you're not presenting the facts though, you're presenting nonsense. You're saying this is Navy housing, it's well, not. We're no, only you're saying you have to contracts with the Navy, they don't. Again, again, again. What we submitted to us is true. You know what I mean? HGM does allow for Identity makes you, and that's 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 the result. So it allows for apartments. No apartment gets rented bedroom by bedroom. I'm, we still have to go through the approval process. The way different apartments and structures, we, that's because we don't get into all that at this point. But we just want to continue. Let's uh, let's call to order. Clear about everything. Everybody's just making up with the representative. I mean, and y'all are saying military. Wee! You know, we didn't say we didn't stand for it. It's a bunch of bulls. You need to be clever. You need to be clever. You need to be clever what you're doing so we. Okay? This Canby County Board of uh, Adjustment is hereby back in session. We maintain a five member quorum. The next speaker, remember to keep it to three minutes and be as factual as possible. Uh, calling Cherie Boyce. Thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. I'm, I'm so glad I got it right. Thank you. <laughs> as Sounds you Cajun now. Do I need now. to swear in and do all that stuff or what? Yes. Uh, do you solemnly swear from that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. I am Cherie Boyce. I live at 5600 Homewood Road, which is on the corner of Langley and Scenic Heights Elementary School, which we haven't even discussed. Um, I have a doctorate in public affairs. I worked for 15 years for Orange County, Florida government for their adjustment board, believe it or not, and other public safety boards. Um, I want to thank you personally for stepping up and volunteering to be on this board and for supporting the um, Ordinance number 2015-12, section specifically 5.1.1 and section 5.2.3. It's my understanding that um, installing these transient housings across a busy street is um, going to create the need for additional parking across the street, a pool across the street, um, a clubhouse across the street, I don't know how many of you have lived in an apartment complex, but I have on an occasion as I've lived around the world in different types of housing. And I tell you, I wouldn't want my children or myself to have to dodge traffic just to get to my car or to get to a pool. 
So I'm, I'm asking you some questions. Uh, you did ask about the backup power for some pumps for a problem that they are probably going to be creating by paving over the grass to begin with. I love that, that they're creating a problem so they can bring you the solutions. And thank you, sir, for asking about that. Because as part of my public safety, uh, public affairs work that I've done, it was as an emergency response um, specialist. And I had to respond to Hurricane Ivan when the pumps didn't have the proper electricity and power to keep themselves running. And so we couldn't get gas because we didn't have pumps to pump the gas. And I'm just glad that you pointed that out. Um, is this development really, really necessary? And is this variance really necessary? Where is the hardship for these individuals in going over and paving over this grassy field that already has a natural two retention ponds? So I, I haven't heard them really come up with any justification for the hardship for asking for the variance to begin with. Um, I thank the staff for their hard work looking at the plans, et cetera. I mean, they are wonderful plans for a problem that hasn't existed just yet. Um, where is their intersection analysis? It's required by you in your section 5.23, uh, point yeah, 5.2.3. I haven't seen that or heard that yet. Um, looking back at what you're implementing, the ordinance itself, there are seven specific um, county development standards. They have really focused in on the number four of managing this stormwater runoff, but they haven't addressed the other six. Um, do you have any questions for me? And I want to be clear, I want to be clear. Again, at this, you all are discussing the condition of use. The variance case will be followed. So, and, and, and she made some valid points. Variance, that's a different set of criteria yes. about hardship. But the conditional use, so we're doing a conditional use now, and then the variance case is to be followed. So I understand they're putting their cart before their horse at this point. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Cherie. Wendy Shipley, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. My name is Wendy Shipley. I live at 6300 Alvarado Road. Two sides of my property are in that corner right by the pool. <clears throat> so I have the most property aligning that. And as several of you know, the last time I spoke, I'm not going to bore you and go over all the other details that I went through before. Um, but I do want to thank you for the opportunity for us to speak to you today. Um, the last time I came, I was a frustrated, fearful homeowner. I'm still a, frust <clears throat> still a frustrated homeowner, but I'm a more informed homeowner. Um, some things have come to light. I will tell you that the, the developer has taken a lot of time and energy to work with us and our neighbors. Not everybody truly has a clear, um, concise understanding of, you know, part A and part B. Um, so, and some of them really just are learning, so they're still in that frustrated stage. And Richard um, addressed a lot of what I had because a lot of my concerns were, are these empty words? Are they telling us all these things that they're going to do? And there's no backup for us. There's no ramifications us to say that you promised us this and you didn't fulfill it. Um, so I'm curious as to what he you know, proposed to you and if it really was what he stated to us. And if that is the case, and we, he will be held to it, because I will tell you, the, previous, or the existing owner... Uh, Dr. Sherlock, even though he had the first variance, never stood up to anything that he was supposed to. And we didn't get a lot of backup. When we went to the county, we didn't get backup. We have two non-functioning ponds on that property. We have terrible flooding. That is a concern. Uh, a lot of our concerns, as I told you before, our homes, our property values, our property values, once they do this, will drop anywhere from 6 to 12%. That's huge. For many of us, that's tens of thousands of dollars. And you add that to the neighbors just that are around that property. That's a considerate impact on those people. A lot of those people are my age or older. That's their retirement. That's their living. And so it is, it is a huge concern for them. Uh, of course, we're talking about, you know, our safety, you know, and all the other things that, that come with that, the noise pollution, all that. We've all lived through that. Those of us are adjacent to have lived through that. We really don't want to live through it again. Excuse me. If they do what they say, it may or may not help. You know, only time will tell. 
The flooding is probably the biggest concern. I, of those people that surround it, probably have the least amount because I am a little higher. Uh, the people on the east side um, have a significant amount of flooding. We'll, you know, we already have this huge issue over Hensman. We haven't found a solution for that. We don't know what's, what the answer is. So my concern is, because that all is tied in together, if we don't have a solution for Hensman, and every time they try to fix it, it gets worse, do we want to immediately open this other can of worms? Do we want to open a Pandora's box? We've already cracked the lid. Do we want to finish opening it? And things are going to get out of control. I just thank you that for your time and your energy that you will um, maybe table this for a little bit longer till we get some more firm answers um, and see if we can find a better compromise for everybody involved. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you for your service. Dan Perdans? 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 Do you solemnly swear from that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Thank you. Uh, Dan Perkins, 5605 Trafalgar Drive, Pensacola. Uh, live, uh, my property is just behind uh, the property in question here, uh, one street over. Um, I'm also a retired Navy here, uh, still work for the uh, federal government as a civil servant. Um, and so what I want to do is just run through real quick. A lot of these things have already been hit on. You, don't, you never know when you're going to speak, you know, what, what position you'll speak in, in relative to the others. So you don't know what's going to get put out. So I'm, let me run through some things. But what I wanted to do is just hit it on some of the major concerns. That, that I feel like, okay, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the community members, you know, uh, voiced last night and we discussed and so on and so forth. There's about 50 of us there roughly, about 50, uh, 50 folks. Um, uh, and that may not seem like a lot of people, but you gotta realize, you know, th th that's, that, that's a, um, you know, a high percentage of the number of people who live, who are directly affected by this, okay? It's not a high percentage of people in the community, but it's, it's, a high, it's not a very big area. And this is the, the, a lot of the people that, that this will be directly affected by were there and do have concerns. So first of all, our concerns are okay. It's kind of eye-opening. You're going to take this, you know, uh, this this property here uh, that has a history of poor, you know, um, of poor uh, drainage. Okay, in a neighbor in a neighborhood that you know has a history of flooding and uh, and, and water problems. Okay, um, and you're going to cover it with concrete and a pool and a clubhouse. Okay. Uh, the, the engineer indicated that this is a colossal engineering challenge to solve this problem, okay, to, to mitigate the problem that's, you know, that already exists, okay. Uh, the original developers basically filled in wetlands that surround that area, okay, and, to, and the, the engineer indicated that today you basically go to jail for doing that, okay, and that contributes to the problems that we had, the water problems that we have now. Um, and the community has, you know, has a history of in, in, in inadequate uh, kind of good water drainage and gutter and the water control, um, uh, which we've been dealing with for years and years and years. Uh, we talk about the, you know, the soil composition is such that the water doesn't percolate down through it properly. Um, there's also, was mentioned that there's a, there's a basic underground stream that runs through there. Okay, and so the water, you know, the water discharge is not from those ponds, okay. It's basically, uh, you get too much water in the area, it gets, I guess it goes down into this stream and then it percolates up and floods the neighborhood. And I've had my garage, water in my garage two or three times after, um, you know, considerable storms and things. Um, so and the other question that came up is, hey, why hasn't this been developed before? It's a prime piece of property in a prime location. Why has nobody ever developed this property before? There, there, so, you know, I'd like to know the history there. Okay. Um, the other concern that we all had is the engineer didn't come up with a firm solution. There's no firm solution. Okay, this is this a proposal. This is one option. So what are the other options? Well, you know, I, I could tie into the existing sewage system. I could do this or I could do that. So we're like, well, this is kind of vague, you know, and so we're all, you know, kind of concerned. We'd like, to, we certainly all like to have more. And I think that's come up here as well. Can I have like a minute or so? Yeah. Possibly. Okay. So, um, so uh, basically, uh, so after the engineer presented, I said, okay, that's fine. Okay, can you give us the metrics on what the, uh, the capacity of the ponds and of the ducting system is in real terms, okay? He said, well, it will hold this much water. So in real terms, 
if it started raining, okay, we have, you know, we have a hurricane, which you all brought up already, but, you know, we have a hurricane or significant storms, okay, the basic capacity of this system would, would, would accommodate the 24 hours of continuous rain. At that point, the overflow would go out onto Langley, and you all are saying, well, hey, you know, it's not going into the community, it's going down Langley Avenue. Okay, well, that, first of all, that's, that is our community, okay, number, number one. Number two is you're going to increase the traffic on the street and you're going to pump water out on the, on the Langley Avenue that's going to run down the road and end up in areas that, that, that don't have proper drainage control from the streets and flood already, okay? So you're going to put water, you're going to increase the traffic and then you're going to increase the water, you know, the, the, the amount of water going on, out onto the street. Um, so uh, it was already brought up that you all astutely, you know, brought that, that uh, we said, hey, well, what about, you know, generators? Uh, so, you know, to because uh, if you get storms coming in, you get power outages and the pumps stop working. And so, so we asked the, the developer what his take on was generators, and he said, "Well, generators basically uh, are unreliable, and um, you, you know you can't count on them when you need them. Ten, you know, six or eight or ten years down the road, they don't work. So, the, so we're kind of scratching our heads there." But uh, um, so what I'm kind of recommending is there's a lot of vagaries here. From the developer, from the engineer, uh, there's some discussions up here with your own staff. He's scratching his head going, hey, you guys weren't real clear on this stuff. Is it possible we could post postpone this decision until we can all get more clarity on exactly what, you know, what's going on here? Um, that's all I got. Thanks for the thank, extra thank time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Board members, any questions of the speaker? Oh. And let me clarify something. I, I'm constantly scratching my head because it itches a lot. <laughs> but I want to be clear. I'm very, very clear with my statement, as I said before. HDMU does allow for multi-family dwellings as apartments. We, if the applicant has presented empty information that is not in agreement with what this application is, was for its own him. And there will be, and if they, and, it's, and if there's some repercussions that got to come on him, it's on them. But this staff, we review this for a multi-family dwelling. That is what HDMU allows for. So I want to be clear on that. Not because I scratch my head. I do it all the time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. I just want to be clear with you, sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Bradley Lambert. Can I, can I ask a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Chairman. Chairman, can, yes. I ask a, can I ask a question of Horace real quick? Can I ask a question of Horace real quick? Sure. Um, where is this in the planning um, stage? Has the site plan, has there been a site plan presented? Where are you in, the, in that process? Yes, for, for the initial group for the apartments only, yes. Okay. It is in the review process. Not for the north end. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Drew. Yes. Okay. And, I, and I'm assuming that, um, and you, you might could answer this, I'm assuming you're waiting for clarity on, on this meeting as to how or when you're going to present um, the plans for the north half. Right. Because um, based on this meeting, you may have to remove all of those parking spaces or move the buildings or um, right. so pool, so forth. Typical course of action is to kind of get all this due diligence zoning stuff out of the way first and then move into the design, frankly, because it's the developer's risk at paying for my services if he right. doesn't get this approval. Right. So um, even on that south side, they essentially have assumed the risk of submitting for the south side because uh, the second item on the agenda related to the parking could even impact what was submitted on the south side. So. Right. Now, and the the thing that I believe the developer had uh, uh, given to us with a, kind of an updated plan uh, for the north side, um, which actually it came from from your your company, McKim and Creed. Um, is is kind of the idea of of what you plan on presenting should this be approved as you would want it to be so the, i mean there's some there's some 
some stated idea of what you plan on presenting to the county and obviously at that point the county gets to give you all the comments right. that they wish to give you as to correcting it for their correct it's well over our heads our engineering and so forth um, but this is a this is a good I good idea of what if if allowed you would present correct Yes, ma'am. That is the design that I would intend to detail in full, submit for full review, and ultimately, hopefully, gain permit approval for. And as far as the stormwater, what we went in detail about is as far as the wet ponds and the underground storage, that is what you would um, present to the county as a stormwater plan. That's right. Um, obviously the county has the ability to change that or to tell you to redesign it you know based on whatever their parameters are right so answer I'll give you now is what I tried to give the residents last night they are looking for a lot of specific right. um, calculations that I will be responsible for preparing as part of my formal stormwater management plan right, right. now what I've got is I'd uh, say it's more than a proof of concept. It's kind of a working design, but I have not formalized and calculated every minute detail as I'm required to do prior to submittal. And again, from my seat, that's just course of business. We got to get right. this out of the way first right. before I proceed into that step. But, but you do have a, a more factual representation of what you plan on submitting, so. That's fair. Okay, I understand. Okay, I just want to clarify that. Um, Thank you. Miss Jennifer? Thank you so much. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Help you, God? Yes, I do. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Brayer, and I live at 3610 Overland Drive. Um, I have been in this area since 1974, adjacent to this pond is where, where I started off. So just for um, clarity, I think I'm probably the biggest historian on this. I'm the one that walked Patrick through and explained to him the water issues and such. I'm also the councilwoman for this district, city side. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm here um, also in part representing my constituents because um, there are a ton of concerns. So a couple of things here, I just wanna clarify some of the things said. Um, the woman back here who said the vibrations in her house, this is because, because there is an underground river. Patrick kind of acknowledges it now. We've done geotech all over the area. There's, um, they've gone down as much as 40 feet. They've never found a dry spot. They're not hitting clay. It's not clay holding this water up. There's an underground river. We've known it since I've lived there. So my parents' pool was built three feet above the, or three feet above the ground. Um, they could only go down three feet because they hit the water table, as were many of these residents. So in the line of this, quote, underground river, Right around this, we have five pools that have imploded upward because the water is coming up. So this is a really weird and very serious situation. At Hitzman, which I um, have worked with extensively for the soccer complex over there, which I was not for because of exactly this. So I argued it extensively, tried to get everybody to understand what kind of water issues we were dealing with. And um, they did it anyway. They put in seven ponds only to find out that the water is now coming up in all of them and they're having to redo them and figure them out, having to put water plants in them, manage them differently. This is exactly part of this property I'm talking about is adjacent to the Pensacourt property. So this is, I think you guys did 15 or so boreholes all over it going down 30 and 40 feet. It is saturated the whole way down. So when we're going into this, we're gonna put a pool down into it. We're gonna force more water outward. So a lot of these neighbors, the water isn't going over this. This stuff we're putting in the ground is forcing it out out and up. So when I walked it with the city engineers, you can see the water table is literally being shoved out and up under here. So you're getting the staining up the, the curbs of the road around there from this water being pushed up. This is a serious issue. This property, for years, you've got a road here and a road here. We've got um, people on either side of that, Trafalgar and um, I always forget your street. Alvarado. Alvarado. At the front of Alvarado and Trafalgar, their backyards meet. 
But in the development, they separate. Your question is why? Well, that is uh, the remnants of this legacy pond that has been there, and they never could quite get it to drain completely. So they literally pumped and drained for 10 years, but they never could get that to drain because it is spring-like. It percolates up. And so they literally, the streets come down, but then their backyards separate to encompass this water feature that we have had back there forever. We looked at um, overheads for... 19, can I continue a minute here? I mean, I really do have the history on this. So um, we've got stuff going back into the 60s and 40s, and you can see this as a waterway there. So this is real serious stuff. Going there, putting a pool in, adding another building on, that's all an issue. And I must say, the reason that the dorm-like apartment, even though I know that's not what we're here to talk about, is important is because because you guys have a policy of 1.5 parking places per rental, which at 76 would bring you to 114, then you guys can do the 10% over, that's 128. They can fit all that on the north side, all right? They're, I mean, on the south side, their issue is that they've got 250 individual rentals. 250 individual rentals times 1.5 is 375 um, parking places they would need, and in all honesty, they're looking for 207. There's trouble here. This isn't enough for what they're proposing, to tell you the truth, but we don't really want them to clear out the rest of the area and put in more, but this doesn't even meet for their individual rentals how many they would need according to your, your game plan. If we say that they only need one parking place per bedroom rental, then, then we have to go at least at 250 and we're not even there and, and this area does not sustain it. One more thing here, this traffic, 12,500 cars pass through that road right there every day. 12,500. That's without us opening the soccer complex yet, which has 800 kids playing in it. Eight kindred kids, their mom and their grandparents. Think of all the cars we're about to add onto this. So then on top of that, the FDOT says that you can estimate about 10 trips of vehicles on a street that people live on. So if we're taking 250 rentals here and, and multiply that by 10, so now we're up into somewhere 18,000, 19,000 vehicles passing through this area every day. It's very serious, very serious. Having them have to cross the street, a stop, and they're coming out of a roundabout, aiming at this, this uh, raised platform walk. It is all extremely troublesome, and it's extremely troublesome to the neighbors. Um, all those neighbors on the east side you said that they met with, um, the ones that are closest to the ponds, they've all asked me to represent that they are not in favor of this at all. They're taking the trees out of that. That's going, that hasn't been calculated in how much the trees already mitigate the stormwater. So what we're talking about in stormwater here is only stuff going off the top. But now when we take the trees out that are handling a great deal of the stormwater, we're even talking more volume of water in this area. You can walk from this pond where it percolates out onto their streets, around the corner, to his mother-in-law's. I mean, you can follow this pond. This, when we say there's other issues, no, this is really in, in the heart of our issue, is this underground waterway. And so um, we actually believe that there should be an FDEP study to find out whether this um, spring should be protected, potentially. Um, the young man that had to leave, um, he lives adjacent to this as well. He's concerned about what this is going to do to his property when we dig down deeper into this. So there are so many issues that have not been addressed. And last night we got a lot of maybes, hopefullys, we think, three possibles, that kind of word. And for something this serious, we really ask that you ask for, you demand much more stringent um, requirements in this type water land. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Any questions of the Councilwoman? Seeing right. none? Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have one question for the engineer before we sure. get to discussing it. <clears throat> your drainage plan, uh, if I understand your testimony, you admit it's a unique uh, configuration I guess, yes, sir. Uh, as a way to handle it. And it's to the best of your professional judgment is, is that it will work. It, again, you're not, as you said, you can't and no one would expect you to guarantee anything to work. 
but it's just your judgment it will work is based on your training and experience. Is that right? And common accepted calculations, I guess, uh, would be the well, only thing I'd add to that. But yes, yeah, common that, engineering practice, my experience, and professional judgment. But again, that's your, I guess, uh, as they say, the estimate of the of the situation is that this is is a remedy that really will provide stormwater protection. I got to be careful about saying it's a remedy. Again, I am not here to characterize what's proposed on our site as a remedy to area-wide That it will manage problems. the, you're hopeful that it will manage the stormwater outflow from your property. Is that a fair? Yes, sir. I am legally required to manage stormwater outfall, and I will have to put my professional license on the line demonstrating that I've done that. Yes, sir. I understand. So I don't mean to... I understand. But I cannot guarantee anything, and I just want to be very clear because this is right. under a lot of scrutiny, obviously. And I think so. it would be improper and maybe even malpractice if you did. So I understand that. Thank you for that understanding. Yes, sir. Well, that's my question, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Did he address that he wasn't even aware of the underground river until... Let's see. We, we, we can't have discussion in the audience. Did you sign up to speak? And you've already spoke. Yes, but this is the okay. I have, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you recall that walkthrough with um, uh, City Councilwoman? Absolutely. Uh, okay. Do you, do you recall, uh, you know, them digging down, I mean, drilling down 30, 40 feet and it's just continuously? So as part of uh, really any stormwater design of significance, one, is the re one of the requirements is that my design be based on a separate study by a geotechnical engineer. So the developers prior to my, well, at the same time I was becoming involved, they were engaging architects to design the building, me to design the site, geotechnical engineer to study the soils. That geotechnical investigation did include numerous borings, north and south properties, did report that the soils are in a condition of being saturated to damp down to, I'm on the record so I have to qualify this, don't quote me exactly, but essentially every boring indicated saturated to damp soils down to nearly the entire depth, if not the entire depth, which was on the order of 30 to 40 feet. All right, with your expertise, uh do you feel like, you know, a pool, a building, or anything would be a problem um, with those, with that situation? I can offer as an engineer that there will have to be specific design considerations to account for those conditions. I am not a structural engineer, so I can't speak to the building, nor am I a pool designer or contractor, but certainly Buoyancy is something that will have to be considered for the pool as it has to be for my pipe that I'm putting under the parking lot. Uh, the structural engineer will have responsibilities to consider those conditions in the design of any kind of, you know, footings or foundations, whatever he's coming up with for the building. So, yes, in general terms, I can sit here and tell you that's going to have to be considered. I am not the one qualified, frankly, to give you those solutions for the pool and the building. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone have any questions of the applicant? Board members, you have any questions of staff? That's all the speakers we have. Chair will now entertain a motion regarding this item. Your motion, please state whether or not you adopt staff's findings of fact. If for any reason you do not accept staff's findings of fact, go through all the criteria and address each one specifically. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment. I'd like to start it off and hear from the board. When this was first presented the last time, uh, it was presented as a, 
essentially a housing facility for uh, military uh, pre-flight training. And as such, that program is an important national security program and it saves taxpayer money. So I have been looking at this project through that lens. But now what troubles me is I find out in the testimony that uh, it possibly might be that or it might be the amenities for just a, an apartment house. That's a different lens for me to look through. I was willing, uh, and that's why I talked with the engineer and he's been very upfront and very factual in his testimony, in my opinion. Uh, I've talked with the engineer about his drainage plans, uh, and he said, and I want to faithfully paraphrase what he said, essentially that drainage and uh, the other geological aspects, I guess you could say, of this project will Potentially he has a solution, but again, he, as he said, he can't guarantee anything. If it were, if I knew for sure that this were uh, intended for the naval uh, 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 pre-flight training, then I would be more inclined to accept the engineers thoughts and uh, uh, because again it to me it involves and it could involve an important component uh, for our nation's defense in a way but we aren't really talking about that now from what I've gathered from the testimony what we're talking about is amenities or amenities to and an apartment house, which may or may not include military housing. That's an entirely different, as I said, a different lens. And I am conflicted about that. And I'd like to hear what the board thinks about this. Uh, as it stands now, I'm really don't think I'm going to be able to support it, but I would like to hear discussion. Yeah, no, I'd like to say something, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was under the influence through testimony in the beginning that it was going to be uh, for those naval um, trainees. And um, even though it wasn't on paper, you know, as stated, you know, um, and I feel since it's um, an apartment co complex to uh, house uh, stu students um, or, or college students, um, naval students or whoever, um, that um, there should be enough parking because what we're here for is for, the, uh, for parking, to expand the parking. And, um, but there should be enough parking uh, for those apartments, uh, whether the actual apartments are um, my concern is for the neighborhood, um, these people, they worked hard to protect their properties. They worked hard to pay their taxes, to try to avoid, you know, their properties from being further damaged, um, to try to have good, um, storm drainage in, a, in a, their neighborhoods. Um, we even had a lady, I don't know, if, yeah, she's still here, you know, she um, deals with kids. And, you know, um, part of the testimony was, you know, well, they can bring alcohol into the clubhouse, which is fine if that's what you choose to do. But when you start um, bringing al alcohol into the clubhouse and all of these people in the clubhouse, they're not in the um, um, training school through the military, 
Um, you, you have different kind of cultures coming in, which is fine, which is great. Um, you have different kind of attitudes. You have different, just different kind of, you know, things that happen, you know. And um, one thing we want to do in the neighborhoods is keep our kids safe. But like you say, we're here today um, about the expansion of the parking area um, for the clubhouse and for the pool. And um, I feel like I was misled in the beginning uh, for what it was all about. So um, I'm going to have a hard time supporting it today. Any other board members have any uh, comments? I guess I do. Um, I don't disagree with anything that's been said by the board. Um, I also don't think that it's the responsibility of the owner of this property to take care of flooding problems or other problems um, that um, he isn't causing. Um, and in fact, I hear the engineer say that perhaps um, this work would help things. But even saying that, um, I'm not comfortable um, with, with this um, conditional use request. Um, I disagree with the staff on criteria A, um, general compatibility that the proposed use can be conducted and operated in a manner that is compatible. Um, I, don't, I don't believe this is compatible. Um, and, and so um, that would be my, 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 the actual reason why I would um, not support this um, conditional use request. Jennifer, would you like to make a comment? The chair will not speak on this issue in the event that the chair may need to break a tie. I understand. Um, like I said in, in um, prior, I didn't view this as a, quote, military, um, private, housing complex. Um, I viewed it as a, um, an apartment complex, um, which may essentially help uh, lessen the burden of um, our rental um, situation that we are in at this point um, as a um, as a county and, and, and statewide and um, even more so. It is zoned such that they can do what they can do, or they can put an apartment complex. That's not the issue. And I stress to you that it that is not the issue here. The issue is do you, we want this apartment complex to have a pool, have amenities, which is something that any tenant would look for in an apartment complex. Um, unfortunately, due to the fact that it's on two sides of a busy street, that is unfortunate. Um, but a pool, a, a clubhouse, I don't think they're asking for anything over and beyond what a normal apartment complex would uh, would want uh, to sell their product. Um, and that's why it's a conditional use. It's not a variance. It's not a um, anything unusual. Um, it's just to add to uh, to the sale of their um, apartment complex that they can within every right of the code do, um, be it for military or be it for college or be it for whoever. Um, I really don't think that's an issue um, because they're allowed to do it. They're allowed to put an apartment complex. Um, and so unfortunately, yeah, this, this area does have some issues. Um, <coughs> I applaud the developer in coming forward, seeing the need instead of what we continually do, and that's have the need 
and try to force something. And I think that this is well thought out. Um, yeah, there's issues, um, but those issues, um, you know, are something that I believe the engineer has elaborately reviewed. Um, and, and as he says, you know, he first thought he would do retention bonds. He, you know, then thought underwater, st underwater storage, you know, it, it seems like this is, this is not something he has taken lightly on, um, on this issue. Um, I view it as, like I said, an apartment complex that's wanting um, amenities and, um, you know, to sell their product. Thank you. We will uh, need a motion. And at that point, uh, remind the board that there have been a couple of mentions of the possibility of extending uh, the date for a decision that was done by the applicant last April. And uh, I just throw that on the table as one of one of the options that we have, Mr. Chair. Would a board member like to make a motion. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion at this time, Mr. Chairman, um, to give the developer and the uh, uh, more time to be more transparent because I feel like um, I feel like I was misled in the beginning, I mean, from the testimony. And I feel like, um, you know, I, I thank the neighbors for coming out today, you know, um, with their testimony. But I feel like there needs to be more time to be more specific. I mean, there's a lot of I think, I don't know, it may improve it and it may not, but even, I, th I think it's worth it even if a little bit more time and finance is um, invested into this project, you know, to be able to come forth and say, hey, this is what we're gonna do, you know? Hey, we got these studies here in hand and this is what we're gonna do to uh, make you neighbors feel better, you know, about this situation. Um, I feel like, but um, but before I go on and on, I'd like to make a motion to to extend it to another time. Okay, the motion uh, is uh, to extend the decision by the BOA until uh, we don't have a meeting in July, if I'm correct. I have a question on that motion, um, so that we could be be clear um, for the developer for the. Are we requesting more meetings, more, more meetings, more, more Ms. issues to be more thought provoking? Ms. On, Ms. On Jones, yes, sir. Ms. Jones, I I'll tell you my concern. Yes. yes. My concern is that until we had a witness come uh, and speak, I was under the impression that this was going to be a naval pre-flight project. Okay. And now what we're saying is, if I understand correctly, that we hope it's going to be one, but if it's not, it's going to be an apartment house. That's an entirely different situation from, and it really colors my thinking, and I'll be honest with you, I'm disappointed too. Uh, I, because I was really w willing and uh, for a project like this to succeed. And, you know, in life, some things you just kind of have to hope for and take on faith. And I was going to take on faith that the engineer's plans would work. For if for a military project like this to aid in 
naval aviation. It's another thing for me to think about this drainage uh, situation in the under the lens of this is an apartment house and the neighbors are going to be living with an apartment house. That's an entirely different thing. And to be honest, I'll have to echo my colleague, I'm disappointed. And, it, uh, and it's affected my perception of the project, and it certainly was going to affect, could affect my vote. And now, if they want to try uh, to come back in August, and if we're really just talking about an apartment complex amenities, then let's have a hearing on that and not a hearing on we're... Uh, we're going to do this uh, uh, naval pre-flight uh, billeting, essentially. Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I am. And I'll second the motion for discussion. We have a motion by Willie, a second by Michael, to table decision on CU 2021-10 until the August Board of Adjustment meeting. That's the motion on the floor discussion. I'm curious to see if the applicant could work with that. Yes, please. Yes, sir. I would have and, and we can talk about it afterwards is what what we could provide that would give you more comfort or more information to answer your question well if this is going to be a military related project and sky warriors going to be involved or something it would seem like it would be appropriate for that a representative for them to be there be here and tell us about it and submit what plans they have if it's not, if this is just going to be, I'm a hopeful that this is going to be the ticket kind of thing, then I think it would be helpful if you would just address it as an apartment house. Here and then tell you because story. I'll be honest with you, and again, I mean no disrespect. You understand that, yeah. but I am disappointed. I I really am disappointed in the way that this was presented. Nowhere did it ever come out, to my recollection, and my recollection may, is not 100%, did anybody say that this could be a civilian-oriented apartment house? I, I understand that. I'm not sure how it got to that point where there was any guarantee of that, but we can have the, like I said, I'd be glad to have the Skywar people here to tell you why they believe that that's what will happen. And they're... When you talk to them, and I will have them here, there's, um, Greg Sigler is the son. He was at the meeting last night. Um, George Sigler is his father. He's really the one that probably needs to talk to you about it. When I talk to them, they're 100% guaranteed. Of course it's going to happen. I mean, this is what, it's, what it'll be, but I'm not them. So I will let them speak to you about that if that would make you feel better. Yeah. I mean, it. at least for my vote, it would. Okay. We can do that. Uh, um, <clears throat> May I also clarify, would we want more stormwater calculations or? I mean, that's just, I'm glad to spend the money if that helps, but I don't want to spend the money. Whoever is. is. I, I think that's a, a conversation that it may be a good idea to have a meeting with the neighborhood. And, um, you know, um, I think it's a lot of. I, and I, clarity about a whole lot when it comes the, to the stormwater. The the way I'm looking at, as far as the stormwater aspect of it, I mean, I, I think that's something that the engineer and the county need to talk. Yeah, I would um, agree. Because the county knows, you know, what it faces um, more so. You know, they know the bigger picture, if you will, uh, as opposed to an individual's 
you know, yeah, my house got flooded, but you know, there's there's other things. If you stop if you stop water here, it's going to go here. If you stop water there, it's, you know, it's a trickle down effect. So I think that's that's between the engineer and the county's um, discussions as to is this something the county will allow? Is this something that, that meets the requirements? Um, when we talk about stormwater, I think a lot of people uh, think that, well, I want this project to solve all the stormwater, you know, and that's not, right. unfortunately, that's not how that works. You know, they have to, uh, and correct me if I'm completely wrong here, but when, when we talk about stormwater, the developer has to deal with its stormwater and what falls on its property and not what, you know, someone two streets down has. Um, now, what it does may affect eventually, but I think that's a conversation that the engineer or the geotech what have you needs to have with the county and to see if they are in um, an alignment with that. Um, and it may be the county says, you are so far off, you know, uh, we want you to build a bigger pond or, 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 you know, what have you. That's something over and beyond whatever this board can or can't. You know, we can say, yeah, you can have a, a pool or whatever, but the county is the one that's going to stipulate, yeah, you can have a pool, but you're going to have to have a, a pond X size. And if the pond X size doesn't allow for that pool, the pool goes away. That has nothing to do with what this board, you know, is about. Meet with staff. Right. Meet with staff. That, that's fine. Yeah, I, I think that's something, you know, okay. yes, we do have the stormwater issue, but, I, you know, as to whether it will work or it won't work, that's something that I don't think that, and Anybody I don't know knows. what everyone's qualifications are on this board, but I think that's something that they need to discuss um, and whether or not they're um, okay with that. And, and, Mr. Jones. And, and, and we're just trying to be clear with the direction going forward for the developer, for the citizens as well, because we do not want to negate trying to minimize anything of their concerns at all. But we must be clear because we want to come back and we want to come back again and there's, and, and it's still, we just don't like it. You know what I'm saying? The nimbyism is real, so we just don't like it. We just don't want it there. Well, So I'm, I'm not saying you're saying that, please. I'm not saying that. But we want to be specific. Now, again, I want to say this for the board. The portion where the apartments was going in the HDMU, that is allowed by right. That don't have to come before this board for anything if it's allowed for apartments. The high density mixed use, I want to be clear with that. They can come to my staff, submit, go through the rigorous process, and, and there is, if the citizens object, there is another avenue for appeal, which it will have to come before this board if they want to appeal a development order on that site. But it does not, that portion does not, that portion will have to be addressed. I want to be clear. Now, on the other side, in the MDR portion, if, if, I'm just trying to be clear. Now, I'm not trying to take sides with anything. I just want to go with my direction as the developer, as director. On the northern half, on the, well, the MDR portion, are we requesting them to do, this is an initial stormwater submittal packet plan for the county to look at all of those things and look at it and, 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 it, and it may not be fully because many things may not happen until Northwest Florida Water Management weigh in. So I'm just trying to, the, the site plan process is a very rigorous, process and then it may take more time to respond and comply with the comment because it's not the only project that's pending. Now if that's the desire of the board to satisfy the neighbors and get the neighbors more feedback and direction, if that's a condition that the board want to make, you can do that. But just with understanding that 
it will require them to submit on that portion to see if they could address all of for the pool, for the clubhouse, for the parking on that side of the street, on that side of the street. And, and you said something, Ms. Rigby. My reviewer, my engineering department, yes, we're going to make sure that it has a positive outfall. But we just got, we're going to, and I'm trying to say this respectfully, but I don't want to try to negate and minimize anybody's concerns. So I'm trying to be very, very respectful and, and with understanding of heart that we can only, my reviewer, engineering department's excellent, got a good team that work for the county. They can only review it per the requirements of the land development code. Any other issue for the county, <coughs> any other issues that the city may have, that the city may, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to no one, that is going to be under their purview. We can only now make sure that it don't cause no adverse impact. Of course, my, my body is going to look at that. But the regulations is going to be pertaining to the Scammy County Land Development Code and our design. And hopefully they're going to bring in enhanced standards, have stronger recommendations, a better review, got a good engineering firm that, that can really, really help try to alleviate and minimize some help with some of the city's issues as well. But the requirement is for the county on that side. I want to be clear with the direction going forward because this is going to be the third time. So we're going to need for you all to give them clear direction on what you want to return. If compatibility is an issue about it being adjacent and abutting to that residential, could they want higher standards, higher fencing, additional buffering, or they just don't want it there because of the subdivision? So compatibility, because that's why conditional use approval, it does allow for compatibility. So, so be clear with them going forward so they won't be wasting the community time and meeting with them, and they don't know what is expected of this board, what y'all want to see to give y'all more of information to make a fair and transparent decision per the criteria that, it, that will become before you. Let, let, me, let me clarify what I, what I want personally. Yes, sir. Um, and it's right along the lines of what you just said. My concern is drainage. That's all my concern is um, at this point. Uh, other comments being made, I support, but my real concern for approving this is, uh, again, criteria A, uh, is the use um, compatible? And I don't think it is at this moment because of drainage. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been convinced that while your work will improve the drainage for your property, what will it do to the outlying properties? And I know that's not your responsibility. That's the county's. So what I'm asking is that you get with the county I know it's a little bit out of the normal realm of, of That's good. That's permit good. processing, That's good. but get with the county and, and see where they're coming from That's and good. what their plans are um, to mitigate the entire problem, um, not just one thing at a time. If you were asking to build houses, um, I would have that same problem. Yes. Yeah. Even though that meets the requirements of the zoning, yeah. um, it makes no sense to go into a mess and try to fix part of it. Either get it all fixed or leave it alone until it can be fixed in total. So, thank you. Well, if it, yeah, that was my concern, I, I can, I think we can deal with that. If it's just a question of more what? traffic, then I can't do anything about traffic, but yes, right. I can deal with that. Yes, sir. Great. My that concern, uh, my concern is what I've said. I am disappointed now to find out that we could be talking about uh, just an apartment house in the neighborhood with amenities. My understanding was that this was a naval aviation related project. I need to be, uh, I need to understand what it is because as I said, it, if it were a, uh, pre-flight program for the Navy and Marine Corps and Coast Guard, of course, I uh, would be more flexible about my, con uh, you know, where I am. But if we're just talking about an apartment house 
potentially in a neighborhood with uncertain geological and uh, uh, grounding, then I have to think a little bit farther down the line on that. I mean, that would be harder for me. I think we can provide you hopefully some information that make you more comfortable with that. But if it's something tied to national security, then I think we could probably, at least for me, I could be more comfortable in my vote. Okay. But I really don't, as I said, I'm really disappointed this has to come out at this hearing. We could have, all of this could have been short-circuited if the uh, original application had been presented as such, you know? I mean, that's, I don't mean it is any kind of, uh, like I say, disrespect to you or your colleagues, but I was really surprised. I'm sorry about that. There's no, no intent to mislead. It's just what we presented. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just to comment, I, I think that with this motion, there might be a better way than, than making a motion on, on this, these items. Uh, procedurally, it appears that we may be placing an undue burden on, on the county staff. It's not, it's not the board uh, interviewing uh, the Navy or whomever. And the, I think we're putting an undue burden on the staff. I think it would be more practical, though the applicant has already done it before, uh, to withdraw it and uh, bring it up at the August meeting, give it time to deal with these two things that the board questions. I don't know how cumbersome that would be. But I think just from hearing what I hear, I think that uh, the vote is going to be uh, uh, to delay. You want me to respond to that? Are you asking me to respond to that, sir? I, 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 I'm I, asking you to consider that. Tabling is the same to me. It, it, I think that either way would be the same thing. We're still coming back at your August meeting. Yes. But hopefully, providing you with these, addressing these two issues in more detail for you is what I'm hearing. Would you have a, a problem withdrawing your motion so that since they've tabled? I don't have a problem with it at all. <clears throat> I don't have a problem with it at all. Good. Mm. And your second? I'll withdraw my second. Okay. I'll withdraw my second, Mr. Chairman. And I it, think it would it, be a good <laughs> solution. It would, it would seem, and we're asking, that we leave uh, V202105 and not present it today. Okay, yes. Is that? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we also, uh, in that case, uh, allow it to be withdrawn. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. We have a motion, we have a second. Those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Okay, th those two items are withdrawn until the August meeting. That's, the, that's including the variance as well, variance and condition of use? Yes. For both cases, okay. Yes. All right. Meeting's uh, finished as far as that goes. Just quickly, board members, uh, I, I, I didn't understand why we were, weren't meeting in July, didn't have anything. We have budget meetings during that time frame when we would normally be meeting, so we would have to be downtown at so, that meeting so instead. So it will be August, then the next, next meeting will be August. Unless some, we have to call for a special meeting. Okay. Okay. Board members, any questions? Uh, I think it's over. Thank you all. Thank you all.
We appreciate it.